Uh, good afternoon from Driggs, Idaho. Is we're in Teton High School awaiting the start of this one between the Jackson Bronx and the Teton Timberwolves. We'll have girls, boys back to back. All the action brought to you by Young Life, Jackson Hall, Young Life, all about teenagers. Jackson Lumber, Jackson's original board store. The McPeak Group, Jackson Hall's, and the town square ends of Jackson Hall, including the Antler at Elk Country at Cowboy Village Resort and 49er in and Suites. For Jackson Hall Radio, I'm Jake Nichols, alongside Kimmy K. And settle in for some basketball action. If you are joining us via YouTube, you're the only ones that can hear us. Unfortunately, we have technical difficulties prohibiting us from getting audio to KZ95. Normally, you would hear us on KZ95, 95.3 FM, back on the radio station in Jackson Hole, but we just cannot get audio hooked up today so we're on youtube only so hopefully you figure out not only the youtube channel and i hope you've got that down so you can see all the video but i hope you're advised that we're a half hour early on the start start time given uh yesterday we were given an update that we would be starting start time be moved up a half an hour so these girls ready to tap in about 10 minutes at 5 30 and the boys scheduled immediately following for about seven o'clock so both games moved up about a half an hour so just to uh, set the scene for you, this is the back half of a home and home. And hopefully Jackson can get things going a little better than the front half went when Teton came to town. That was just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm trying to find exactly when that was on January 5th. So, yeah, just about 20 days ago, these two teams met in Jackson and Teton got the better of the Jackson Bronx in both girls and boys. The girls were on the wrong end of a 63-17 game and the boys lost their game also um, and I think it was a wake up call for the Bronx. In fact, that was the last time Jackson has lost. 54-42 the final on that one. Jackson losing to Teton on their home court. So, little revenge factor for the boys. You bet. You go back and look that loss January 5th at home against Teton broke a three-game winning streak that Jackson Bronx had going. They have since gone on to win three in a row again. So can Teton do it one more time, break a three-game winning streak? Uh, we'll see. It's going to be – it's a different Jackson team they're facing, and I'm sure it's a different Teton team as well. But we'll get – We'll get you a little more details on the boys game, but first we got to set the scene for the girls. And for the girls, it couldn't be a, a more different story. Uh, these Teton Lady Timberwolves, pretty darn good. Their record 12 and seven, one and two in conference. They're coming off a loss uh, in their last game. They played back on Saturday, same as our Lady Bronx. Both teams played last on Saturday, so sh they should be pretty fresh. Uh, this Teton ladies team is ranked number one of the 3A Mountain Rivers, coached by Pat Hogan. Uh, they average uh, 51 points a game. Their defense gives up about 40 points a game. They're really, really good. And on the flip side of things, the Lady Bronx, well, not the season that anybody would hope for. A down year, a rebuild year for the Lady Bronx. Coming into this one with an overall record of 0-10, 0-2 in conference, 27 straight losses dating back to last year and uh, bottom of the pack in virtually every statistic. But when you don't look at the scoreboard, you don't look at the numbers, you just watch the game. Coach Sean Shockley and I and Kimmy K, right? Yeah. See some improvement every day, every game. Yep. 
The girls are get, getting better at stuff. The effort is there. You look at stuff like Mads Holland and Sierra Johnson leading the team in rebounding. The work they do in the paint on the glass, um, they give their all, and they really battle for rebounds. Yeah, and I'm going to say they usually have been up against the like player on the other team that's the best. The, yeah, they're always facing so. the other team's top. True. Then you look at, you know, somebody like a Zoe Bosch, and she hardly ever comes off the court. So I wouldn't question what she's got in the tank. What stamina? <laughs> and Zoe Bosch, and you look at uh, off the bench like a Harley Rommel. She is not afraid to shoot. This is a no. team that doesn't shoot enough. And to butcher a Wayne Gretzky quote, you're gonna, you'll miss 100% of the shots you never take. Yeah. So if you want to score, you got to shoot. And there are times long stretches of the game where the girls just can't even get a shot off and thank goodness for somebody like Harley Rommel off the bench she'll chuck it and sooner or later they'll start going in Lucy Webb how about Lucy Webb gutting out an injury we'll yeah. still wait and see what she is she had a jam finger pretty bad against Green River but she she went she played some time Naomi Roper one of the only seniors on this team the only senior in fact uh, whenever she has the ball in her hands, you feel this calming influence like she's not one to panic. Allison Burcham off the bench. She's going to give you 100% every time. So Rihanna Rhodes, I can't help but root for Rihanna Rhodes. She's got to be <laughs> 85 pounds soaking wet. It looks like a good wind I mean, would blow her over. And you look out there to know she she's battles. a junior. I would look on the floor and think she was a senior. She's, yeah, she's got. I mean, a, a, a freshman, sorry. The looks of her, yes. She looks she's like small, middle she school be a kid. Fresh and a couple she, others that yeah she plays with poise and uh, one one thing we'll we'll talk to head coach Sean Shockley in a minute after we take a quick break but we'll tell you what the girls have been working on this week and it's interesting and I, I agree with coach Shockley it's something they they really should be working on so that it's good news we'll come back and we'll talk more about the matchup between these two teams we're minutes away from start time girls basketball first the Lady Bronx Lady Timberwolves getting set to tap here in just a few minutes. We'll come right back after this. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes the dynamite. And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So, crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. The white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom goes it out. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. You're watching and listening to live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Sports on KC95. Back to the action. You're uh, watching us only on YouTube. Once again, apologize. There's no radio broadcast today. Had technical difficulties. Just the YouTube product. Coach uh, Sean Shockley talked about the girls, some of the good things he saw going on in Green River. And he thought one thing is they were able to break the full court press. These girls still turn it over too much. Yeah. And a lot of those turnovers, though, are now happening in the half court. They're now happening in the front court, the offensive part. And it's when a girl may, maybe picks up her dribble and doesn't need to and she gets double teamed. But as far as the full court press, they're starting to figure out how to break that. They're doing it with passing and a couple of set plays. But it's, uh, it's other turnovers have been problematic. And a lot of it has to do with a lack of confidence and, and physicality. So Coach Sean Shockley, this week in practice, has had the girls work on getting tougher. Now, we already know they're mentally tough. When you get right. beat yeah. as bad as this team 
gets beat uh, night in and night out. you got to be mentally tough to get back up and want more. And they do. They keep yeah. coming at you. They'll come back and, and play another one. But physically tough. He wants to see them, for instance, when they're dribbling with a ball, turn their back to the opponent, shield that ball with their back, and then maybe a lower shoulder and drive on them. Uh, he wants to see more physicality, and hopefully that translates into building confidence. That was uh, Coach Sean Chocolate said he's been working on in practice. And we'll see how it translates in this one. Let's uh, let the girls introduce themselves. The starting lineup brought to you by Young Life of Jackson Hole. Hi, I'm Ashley Chamberlain, a freshman. Hi, I'm Naomi Roper, and I'm a senior. My name is Jim Young Garcia, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Zoe Bosch, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Allison Bergshaw, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Marlo Strickland, freshman. Hi, my name is Sofia vasquez Baez, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Lucy Webb, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Sierra Johnson, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Raider Rose, and I'm a senior. Hi, I'm Mads Holland, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Hayden Block, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Trinity Green, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Kat Inky, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Holly Rowe, and I'm a freshman. Well, you probably heard in that lineup so many of the girls introducing themselves as freshmen and sophomores. It's not your imagination, a very young team full of underclassmen. And they got their work cut out for them tonight against these Timberwolves. This is a pretty good T-Wolf team. Uh, they're better on the road than they are at home. Seven and three on the road, four and three at home. They own the all-time matchup in uh, between these two teams. They've met 15 times going back to 2006. And uh, Teton has won 10 of those, 10 of the 15. Um, yeah, so it, it, this year, you know, there's so many dangerous weapons on the Timberwolves side of things. Morgan Johnson in the backcourt is a absolute three ball specialist. When she's on, uh, you can't stop her. She will make it rain threes. Grace Hogan is uh, their steal. The Grace Hogan, their junior, loves to steal the ball and turn those into layups going the other way. And then, uh, you know, the backcourt, then you got down low, Porter Wood, the six foot sophomore. Just there's not many teams that can match up with her. So many weapons on this Teton team. It's going to be a tough, tough ask for Coach Sean Shockley as we get set to hear the starting lineups, I think, or we're going to have a national anthem. We'll step out real quick for that and hear from one more of our sponsors. You're enjoying Jackson Bronx basketball on KZ95 and the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. Jackson Lumber, the board store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available, with names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt. Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Gromont. Call 733-6000. 733-6000. Experience Jackson Hole like a local while staying at the Antler Inn, Elk Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, or 49er Inn and Suites. With the best entertainment, dining, shopping, bars, and brews all in walking distance, you'll never want to leave. Call 1-800-4-TETONS or find them on the web at townsquareinns.com.
We're back courtside and just about ready to go here. Get the starting lineups to you, both teams. At the far sidelines, the Teton Timberwolves in their home maroon, trimmed in more maroon. Or kind of a red, I guess, for the uh, Lady Bronx. They're in their road whites, trimmed in black and orange. Naomi Roper will get the start for Sean Shockley's Bronx, along with is that Lucy Webb? Yeah, the, Lucy Webb. The, sophomore, the senior Naomi Roper, the sophomore Lucy Webb, the freshman Zoe Bosch. Sophomore Mads Holland. And, and Sierra Johnson. Yep. The freshman. On the other side, the home team will put out junior Morgan Johnson. Along with Grace Hogan, that's the backcourt. Abby Barkdahl has really come on of late. She gets a start. She's sort of the Swiss Army knife. There's nothing she can't or won't do for Teton. Porter Wood, the six-foot sophomore, and who was that last starter? Reese Coons, the junior, uh, who is the assist leader on this team. She can really dish it. Boy, these girls play some good basketball. Can't remember her name from last year. Yeah. They've had some great ones over the years. The Brown girls, uh, Kinley and Cambry Brown, Tatum Strite. They've been blessed with some really good teams. Jackson moving right to left on your radio dial. And set the tap, Sierra Johnson along with Porter Wood. A little bit of a mismatch. Porter has got a lot of length to her, and Porter will win the tap. And it's Teton Ball to start. Ball thrown out of bounds and a rear bad pass there from Grace Hogan. Jackson will take over inbounds Zoe Bosch. And a little full court pressure here for Teton. See how Jackson reacts. Bosch gets it back from nice. Sierra Johnson. Her pass intended for Lucy Webb goes off the hand of Morgan Johnson. Johnson and Hogan, very good backcourt combination for Teton. And they're out there looking for any kind of an errant pass. Jackson will try it again. Zoe Bosch picks up the dribble and works it up ahead to Mads Holland. Nicely to Lucy Webb. That's how you break the press. Webb meets Porter Wood, and she'll pull it back. And top of the key reset here with Zoe Bosch. Bosch works it near wing to Naomi Roper. Roper back to Mads Holland. Holland to Bosch on the far wing. Bosch to Webb, not much going on in the interior now. Webb picks up a dribble and immediately sees a double team, but passes safely to Mads Holland. Her bounce pass inside to Bosch is picked off, and it's Grace Hogan. Hogan inside to Wood. Wood will try it up and over two girls and makes the shot. It's 2-0. Good defense there, but there's just too much of Porter Wood. She's just... Too much length at six foot. Bosch works it ahead to Mads Holland. Holland double team but up ahead to Webb. And that's what these Lady Bronx were doing against Green River last weekend to break the full court. Uh, very encouraging. That pass again picked off as Morgan Johnson with her second steal. She'll try it herself. A shot well short and out of bounds. I thought off Grace Hogan, but they'll say <laughs> they'll say Jackson and Hogan will inbounds here. 636 or just underway here in T-Town. Yes, an early start. The start time got pushed up a half hour. 2-0 T-Town. Here's a long three from Morgan Johnson. She's good. And we talked about the junior who can really hit him from distance. And she's got that one. When she's got the range found, she's deadly. Zoe Bosch up ahead to Mads Holland. Holland in trouble. Gives it right back to Bosch. They got to get it across uh, the timeline go, here. Go, go. And a nice. pass to Webb. They just do. Lucy Webb passes over to Sierra Johnson, but it's just out of her reach and out of bounds. They barely got across the line. They did, but then an errant pass. Jackson will retain possession. Must have went off. Boy, I'm not seeing these. They're making up for the last call down there. Ah, of there course. Yep. That's Naomi Roper working on Grace Hogan. Tried the baseline. Hogan shut her off, and the ball out of bounds off 
Hogan. So Jackson will retain possession. Zoe Bosch will inbounds underneath her own basket. We got one minute burn down oh. here in the first. Nice. Pass to Sierra Johnson, tracks it down in the front court to Naomi Roper. Roper, she's got a dribble. There we go. She dribbles to the center here. Doesn't see anything she get likes up, up, and up. needs some help now. And she passes over to Mads Holland. Holland lost the handle out of bounds, but they're going to say it was poked by Reese Coons. That was. I saw it. All right. Bosch. That one is a legit. Jackson not getting many looks at the basket here. Really good defense by Teton early, just not allowing much. Here's a double team on Naomi nice. Roper. She dribbles her way out of it with a left hand. Now loose ball mm. scramble, and Porter Wood pulls it free to Morgan Johnson. She'll wait. No, she'll give it right to Wood oh, cutting. Rebound. Porter misses. Rebound. Good. That's Reese Coons, the junior, who put it up and in, and it's 7-0 here. With a minute and a half gone on the first, T-Town now backs off that full court pressure. They'll pick up the D at the half court. Zoe Bosch across the line. Bosch with a right hand dribble, looks around, swiped at by Morgan Johnson. Pass over to Webb, inside to Naomi Roper. Roper got Ooh. Johnson on her, or Hogan on her rather. Shot up, no good, but a foul. Coming up here on Teton in the act of shooting, it'll send Webb to the line and a chance for Jackson at their first points of the game. Foul is on Abigail Barkdale, her first, team first, game first. And Webb from the line, she's still got those fingers taped together oh. on her non-shooting left hand. First shot, no good. So bad, I just get so, so mad close. it's so close. Webb, a 25% free throw shooter. These numbers good through last week, not including Star Valley and Green River games last weekend. Any stats that we give you? Not updated to reflect the last two games. Webb, her second is good. And Jackson's on the board, 7-1. T-Town with the ball. It's Hogan bringing it up. The 5-7 junior surveys the situation. Over to Abigail Barkdale. She'll try a long shot. No good. And out, out of bounds, Jackson ball. Jackson has to take advantage of the non-pressure now. Half court D and also every trip up court, Teton doesn't score. You would love to answer. Gonna so, say, I, I feel like Jackson did a really good job against the press, getting it down here. We just didn't get any reward for it. Maybe that's why Teton just sort of quit at it. Lucy Ooh. Webb in trouble, threw it away as Grace Hogan with another steal. Hogan coming the other way, feeds inside to Abby Barkdale, up and in, found Barkdale on a kind of a backdoor cut, and she got kind of lost in the wash there. Nobody had her picked up, and she puts it up and in, but the feed was a beauty. And it's just another good assist. Here's a steal by Reese Coons goes up and in the other way, the 5'10 junior in a timeout, as we've seen Sean Shockley do many times. It was him that called it, right, as we're at 11 to 1 here? I think so. We'll stay right here. 4.09 to go with the first, 11 to 1. Timberwolves off and running here, and Sean Shockley often calls the timeout in the first couple, three minutes. Just as a teaching moment, you never know what you're going to see. You think you know what you're going to see when you're Coach Shockley. You tell the girls all week, here's what we see on film. Here's what they're likely to do. And then, you know, until you get in the game, then you figure out what they're really doing. And then Shockley will call yeah. a timeout and say, all right, here's what you're seeing. And here's, here's what I like what you're doing. That conversation's usually short. Here's the things I like you've done. No, <laughs> and here are the I things, think that's a little longer than you think. Here are is. the things you've done wrong so far, and that, that's what takes up the rest of the time out. <laughs> I don't feel like they're doing a lot of wrong things. I think they're doing the right things. They'll get it figured out. If later this season or next year or the next, uh, these freshmen and sophomores get valuable experience, it'll pay off. Sooner or later, Zoe Bosch brings it up with four minutes to go in the opening frame. Jackson down 10. Rihanna Rhodes, seeing her first action, works it to Webb. Now Bosch will try a three from the near elbow. No good, too strong. Rebound on the backside is Kaya Richardson, who's now in the game, the 5'4 senior for Tita. As they've made a few changes, we'll try to track those down for you. Melissa Bagley is one of them. She's in the game now. Gets it to Grace Zog. She's also oh. in off the bench. And lo lost ball there and a steal by Lucy Webb, but a whistle. And it was going to get a T-top push. Yeah. 
It's on Grace Zog, team second, her first. Inbounds from Zoe Bosch, 3.32 to go in the first. Jackson down 11-1. Lucy Webb with the ball being watched by Melissa Bagley. Bounce pass to Mads Holland. Holland right here on the near elbow in front of us. Bounce pass oh. intended for Zoe Bosch, who was cutting, but just not quite accurate with the pass. And you have got to be pinpoint with your passes with Teton. You, nobody's very open. you got to be right on with it. There's Porter Wood inside. Triple team. So she dishes to oh. Bagley, who lost the handle out of bounds. So a chance to see some of the girls off the bench for Teton. And that might give the Bronx a little bit of an opportunity because the starters for Teton are super good. Lucy Webb, Zoe Bosch play pitch and catch in the backcourt, and Zoe will bring it up court. How many times have we seen her as the ball hitter? She gets double team yeah. trapped right away, but dribbles out of it. That is huge oh. maturation for Zoe Bosch. She missed the shot, but I love the aggressiveness. So does Sean Shockley clapping on the sidelines as Zoe saw the double team, didn't panic one bit, just took it right to the rack. That's a good sign for Jackson. Here's Bagley with the ball now. Near side, works it to Kaya Richardson. Back to Bagley, zips it around the horn to Grace Sock. Now all the way cross-court pass, dangerous. Porter Wood got a hand on it. It goes to Kaya Richardson. Back out top to Bagley, who puts up two. That's the play they want to run. We'll see what it is. Kaya Richardson makes a move on Rihanna Rhodes. Can't get around her. Top of the key to Wood. Or sorry, to Bagley, whips it around. Now it's inside of Porter Wood, up and in over the top of Sierra Johnson. Sierra had pretty good defense on her, but it didn't matter. Wood puts it in, 13 to one now, T-Tot. Bosch brings it up, just under two to go in the first. Zoe reaching in there, and Zoe pushing back. And again, I love the aggressiveness from Bosch. A reach in by Grace Sog, knocked that ball out of bounds. Bosch didn't appreciate it and shoved back a little bit on Grace Zog and letting the sophomore know, or the senior know, she didn't appreciate the defense. But I like the fight in the girls. Beautiful yes, pass yes, yes. to Zoe Bosch, yeah. up and in, and that was gorgeous. 13-3, Jackson down 10 now. And they're starting to do a few things right. Bagley works one into Reese Coons and a real power move. My goodness, 5'10", junior Reese Coons just puts a nice power move in that, in that left block up and in. And it's 15-13. 116 to go in the first. Coons now with a steal and a pass intended for Sierra Johnson as she dribbles it out of bounds. And the turnover gives Jackson the ball back. Bosch will inbounds. Lucy Webb ready to receive in the backcourt. Webb brings it over the timeline, dribbling with that sore left finger there and now bounce pass to Roper. Roper in the near elbow, works it to Rihanna Rhodes. Rhodes will try driving into the paint but lost the handle on the way there and now a scramble for it. And it's Grace Zog along with Lucy Webb that both hit the deck. And we'll see who they're calling on this. It's gonna be Zog, I believe. No. It just they're gonna go, it's they're gonna ring Lucy Webb up with the foul. Oh, I guess. Jackson's first. Could have been either one. They were both kind of wrestling for the ball. Bagley works it far side. I believe that that might be Brooks Tibbetts, actually. Number zero. She's wearing the double zero. And that shot up and in. Thought it was number 30, but it could be double zero, which would be Brooke Tibbetts. And I believe it is Tibbetts. Could drive to the down the lane here by Zoe Bosch. That's the second time she has just saw an opening and went right to the rack. And that's the kind of aggressiveness Coach Shockley said he was working on in practice. Something the girls got to show a lot more of. Bosch looking to inbounds here. And finally floats one all the way to Lucy Webb, but too tall over her and out of bounds. Tibbetts will inbounds for Tita. No, she'll give it back to Kaya Richardson will do the duty. And Richardson and Tibbetts now comprise the backcourt. Both seniors, both under 5'3", I would guess. Tibbetts listed at 5'2". I'd have to stand next to him. <laughs> 
Reese Coons works it out. Now they're back out to the top of the key with Tibbets being watched by Webb. She gets around Webb and feeds the dish over to Bagley. And now around the horn, long three from Tibbets off the back of the iron. That was close at the buzzer. It almost went in. <laughs> and that's how we'll end the first quarter. After the first eight minutes, it's Teton 17, Jackson 3. Coming right back with the start of the second quarter. After these, you're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 on the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Bronx basketball is brought to you in part by the Elk Country Inn. Coming May of 2020, the Elk Country will offer new rooms and amenities. The new expansion will bring a brand new indoor-outdoor swimming pool, indoor and outdoor spas, a new dining area with complimentary breakfast, conference facilities, and so much more. Located on Pearl Street, you'll be able to leave the car and walk to Jackson's greatest shopping, dining, entertainment, bars, and breweries. Live like a local at the new Elk Country Inn, coming this May. Let's get back to the live action on KZ95. Here's Jake Nichols. Obviously, we already have a new Elk Country Inn. It's kind of an old ad. Still missing Clarine Law, boy. Talk about an entrepreneur, a hotelier, and just a... Madam about town, she was. She is the queen of Jackson Hole. Queen of Jackson Hole. Well put. Quarter number two here. I'm adjusting my scoreboard. And all right. Zoe Bosch with the ball for Jackson. Over to Rihanna Rhodes. Far side elbow gets it back to Bosch. Girls are doing a really good job of beating the double team trap. They've seen enough of it now at this point, midway through the season. Lucy Webb with the near elbow, watched by Morgan Johnson. Johnson and Grace Hogan, the backcourt back in. Nice open look from Naomi Roper. She can't make the shot, however. Rebound is Porter Wood, but a good look. They got the ball to the open person. Roper just couldn't finish. Here's Morgan Johnson. Cross court to Porter Wood. She'll try a long one. That's not usually her place, and she misses. But the rebound picked up on the back end, on the backside by Morgan Johnson. She'll try one, no good. And Coons with the rebound. And right now, offensive boards killing Jackson. You can't give these girls too many looks. Abigail Barkdale misses, and finally Jackson with the rebound. Zoe Bosch going coast to coast. Her shot, no good. She's hit from behind by Wood and knocked down. No call. Ball out of bounds. And we'll give it to Teton. Referee's letting him go. Bosch has got something on her right knee I have not seen before. And she, oh, it's the first time I've before. seen her labor a little bit on that leg. I'll watch her. She just plays so many minutes. Here's Grace Hogan, the junior, works it to Coons. Back to Hogan. Hogan with Webb on her. Might bounce pass inside of Wood. She's triple teamed. Finds an open Barkdale, and her shot is blocked by Johnson. But Sierra's going to pick up the harm and send to the line Abigail Barkdale. The Ooh, they gave it to Zoe Bosch. Mm, well, Jackson can't afford either girl really getting it, but Bosch her first. First. Shot by Barkdale is no good. 17 to 3. We're still there with one and a half minutes gone here in the second quarter. Second one from Abby Barkdale is good, and it's 18 3. Jackson ball, Lucy Webble, and we got a timeout on the floor. No, no just mass substitutions by Teton head coach Pat Hogan, who brings in a whole host of new players and we'll try to track them down for you. Brooke Tibbetts back in there in the backcourt. Jackson ball pass inside a roper now outside long three off the front of the iron no good and that's that Haley Rommel we talk about who when she's open she's going to launch them and that one was close but she just couldn't get it ball out of bounds Teton's ball but I like Rommel shooting that was the right idea. Bringing it up is Brooke Tibbetts, the 5-2 senior, and she's watched by Webb. Far side to Kaya Richardson. Now she gets it back. Tibbetts kick out to Barkdale. 
Abby puts it on the floor with a dribble and now goes far side to Grace Zog. Zog back at the top of the key to Kaya Richardson, the senior. She drives the lane, bounce pass far side, shot up, no good, short. And a rebound, Jackson. Mads Hollins come down with it. Lucy Webb brings it up for Jackson. They trail by 15 here. Midway through the second quarter, Mads Holland, bounce pass oh. inside, looking for Harley Rommel, stolen away by Tetot. Kaya Richardson with it, will give it back to Brooks Tibbetts. That's about the third time, and I think two of them were Holland, where she saw somebody cutting, tried to make the bounce pass there, was just oh so close, but... Again, These like passes. I said, they're doing the right thing. It's just not – it's just the missing that tiny – Good finesse. idea, execution just a little off. Barkdale stepped out of bounds there once she got the rebound, so Jackson ball. One of the things Jackson's got to do better here in the early going is rebounding. Is these Teton girls all pretty good size. Coons is 5'10". Porter Wood, of course, at 6 foot. Bagley is 5'10". Got some girls with some length. It's toughed out. Rebound. That kind of size. Lucy Webb with the ball now for Jackson. Looking for a cutter. Her pass is intercepted. And that is Kaya Richardson, who picked it off, works over to Tibbetts. Tibbetts with Rommel on her. Back to Richardson. Back to pitch and catch here between Tibbetts and Richardson now a push off. It was Cadence Hanson, or sorry, Grace Zog who had the ball. She was shoved a little bit by Sierra Johnson. Sierra Johnson, her first team third. Both teams now with three fouls each. Kaya Richardson, the 5'4 senior, will inbound. She's got Barkdale. She'll give it to her. That shot no good. Too strong from Abby Barkdale and Jackson Ball. Bircham up ahead to Lucy Webb bounce pass inside to Sierra Johnson. She gets mugged. And the whistle, yes, on Grace Zog. She's the guilty party. And they've got Grace Zog for three fouls. I don't think that's correct. It's only fourth team foul. <laughs> she could have been the one to got all the first three. <laughs> And they must have gave her some of them while she was off the bench. Good job by Bircham. Couldn't find anybody open. Knew she was running out of time and just bounced it off the leg of Brooks Tibbetts, who wasn't paying attention, and gets herself a new reset here with another fresh five seconds. Roper checks out Rihanna Rhodes in for Jackson. And here's Bircham. We'll see if he can find somebody open this time. Floats oh, a pass for nice. Harley Rommel. Rommel tracks it down. Harley Rommel with Richardson on her. Far side, Rene Rhodes. Rhodes gives it. Over to Lucy Webb. Nice left-handed pass into Sierra Johnson. Back out to Rhodes. Rhodes hands off to Lucy Webb. She is hounded by Grace Zog. Her pass intended for Bircham. Never connected. Out of bounds. Ooh, I thought Girls, it was tipped there, but really good defense by T Tatter. Just not giving you much. Not much to pass to. Not much. Going on offensively, just very good Timberwolves defense. Tibbetts far side to Abigail Barkdo. Those two play pitch and catch. Now a shot up, no good. Oh. Rolls off the rim, rebound, and that shot by Richardson is too short, but she got hammered as she let it go. And that's going to be another Jackson foul. And then Lucy Webb, I think, for 13. Nope, Allison. Bircham will pick up her first. It'll send to the line Kaya Richardson, the 5'4 senior. Her first shot is no good. Off the back of the iron, then off the glass. Substitutions for Coach Shockley. Mads Holland back in, replacing Allison Burcham. And, and Zoe Harley Bosch. Rommel comes out. Zoe Bosch back in. That back end shot, back end of the two is good. So we got a 19 3 game. Jackson Ball, 3.46 to go in the half. So we Bosch out here at the high key being watched closely by Grace Hogan. Now gets it to Mads Holland. Mads Ooh. to Bosch. No, that didn't get there. And that's stolen away by Hogan up and in. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen Grace Hogan do that on game film. Steal a ball and then just go the other way and softly put in the easy layup. She's 
pretty automatic at that. If you give her a say, sniff of a bad pass, she's taking it the other way. Like you said on there, I think the Lady Bronx are doing the right stuff, but what they're doing, how these passes are getting taken away, Teen Titans watching them, but the girls are waiting for the ball to get to them instead of going to it. Oh, yeah. They're like anticipating, but that that's that that's age. That that's just yep. being young and learning a little yeah. bit more. Like I like what I'm seeing, but there it it's they got to go for the ball. They can't wait for the ball yeah, to come to them. Yeah, if you're the one who the pass is intended for, yes, just like in football, you kind of got to fight for that ball a little bit. You got to come back for it. If it's a soft pass, you got to help whoever passed it, help them out. And you got to want it a little bit more. It's tough. You know, the pass also has to be hard and accurate, and that so often doesn't happen for these girls. They're a little tentative with the passing. You got to... Yep. You gotta think it's there, know what's Do there, it. and fire it. And yeah, and step towards it. Grab that ball. Those two things are happening. I mean, I'm liking what I'm seeing out there. 317 to go in the half. Jackson ball. Zoe Bosch. Jackson trails 21-3. Bosch watched by Hogan. Now gets it to Mads Holland. Far elbow. Holland right in front of the T Top bench. Ooh. Picks up her dribble into Rihanna Road. She's double teamed. Found the open man, and that's <sighs> Shaw in and out. Lucy Webb. Great job by Rihanna Rhodes. Recognized the double team. Knew somebody had to be open, but the shot just wouldn't go. Jackson with a steal at the other end. It's Holland who gives it to Lucy Webb, who brings it up court. Webb had Bosch for a minute cutting, but didn't see it. And now gets it to Holland. Bounce pass. Rihanna Rhodes, oh. she'll try a three. Yep. Looked pretty, but it just wouldn't go. Off the back of the iron. Rebound by Grace Zog. And T-Town with the ball now. 2.30 to go in the half. Timeout, Timberwolves. We'll stay here. So 2.31 to go in the half. Teton 21-3. And now we're seeing some encouraging things from the girls. We are seeing a little bit more of the aggressiveness that Coach Shockley wanted to work on. Aggressive really translates to confidence eventually. Mm -hmm. You know, play hard, play physical, play aggressive. And that soon becomes confidence when you see that start to work. Seen a little bit of that. Seen a continuation of the Lady Bronx being able to break pressure. Um, Teton will trap. They're, they're trap happy. They seem to be doing less of it tonight than they did in Jackson back 20 days ago. Maybe that's because uh, Coach Hogan knows he doesn't really have to press a team like Jackson at this point, or maybe because the girls have proven that they can find their way out of trouble. Tibbetts with the ball to Hogan. Grace Hogan works it over to Porter Wood. She'll try a long one. That's a two, but about a 20-footer, and she nails it to make it 23-3. Jackson down. Double digits, and Zoe Bosch working on Morgan Johnson. Bosch hands it off to Lucy Webb. Ooh. She gets away from Porter. No, oh, she's going to travel doing it. Jump ball. I thought I'm they were going to jump it. Mm. Lucy Webb was trying to pull the ball away from Porter Wood. In doing so, took steps. And, I th yeah, I thought they would call it both, a jump. Both hands around the ball. Brooke Tibbetts with it now. The 5-2 senior for T-Town, just under two to go in the half. Nice pass inside to Reese Coons. Power move, and she left it just short. Mads Hollins had the rebound but lost the handle, and Sarah Johnson finds the loose change. Gets it over to Bosch. Jackson come up court. Bronx trail 23-3 with a minute 37 to go in the half. Bosch hands off to Rihanna Rhodes, tracks down the loose ball. Rihanna dribbling on Grace Hogan. Hogan just swatting at it, and finally Lucy Webb there to help out her teammate. Webb working on Tibbetts, picks up her dribble, bounce pass near elbow to Holland, Ooh. looking for Rihanna Rhodes on the back door, cut, and the pass just out of her reach, out of bounds. Holland's got to get better with the passes. She sees the cut. She sees the open player. Uh, so that's the idea, we say, is working. It's the execution. These passes got to be better. I felt like they had a little extra oomph on it. And Morgan ran out of jo way. <laughs> Johnson, oh. long three from Grace Hogan, and her and Johnson both can hit those long ones. That time it was Grace Hogan, 26 to three, with just under a minute to go in the half now. Zoe Bosch, Bosch up here at the top of the key, really being watched by Morgan Johnson, swiping at it whenever she can. Now. 
Sierra Johnson with Porter Wood on her. Wood again Whoa. puts her hand on the basketball twice mm. and the pass thrown away. That's tough. Porter Wood, the six-foot sophomore. She's been playing varsity ball since she was a freshman. She's got an older brother who plays on the boys' team. She is tough to deal with, and twice she whacked the ball as it was in the hands of Lucy Webb, and Webb finally panicked and threw it out of bounds. Tibbetts with the ball now. 25 seconds to go in the half. Brooke Tibbetts works it to Wood. Thought about a shot. Walks right around Roper, and now she'll put it up. It's good. Porter Wood kind of abused Naomi Roper there. Sent her one way, and she went the other and put up a nice 18-foot jumper. Nothing but net. Jackson with the ball. Under 10 seconds to go. Oh, Coughed up by Bosch. Coming the other way. Morgan Johnson. She'll wait for help. It's Porter oh. Wood and her shot no good. But she is knocked to the ground. She'll go to the line. The foul is on. It I might guess, be Bosch again with her Bosch, second. Yeah. Yep. It is. Zoe Bosch will pick up her second foul to the line. Porter Wood got no numbers, no stats on these Teton girls. They don't believe in keeping stats over here in Idaho. <laughs> Can't find any. Wood makes the first. And see if she can convert the back end. About nothing she can't do, and she's got that as well. 30 to 3 now. Teton Lady Timberwolves in the lead. Jackson, two and a half seconds. It's not going to be easy. Here comes the last heave Whoa. from Zoe Bosch. Now that almost got there, but nope, that's how we'll end it. After the first half of play, it's Teton 30, Jackson 3. We'll come back with a halftime show on the home of the Bronx, Jackson Hole Radio Sports Network. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes it out of the And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. White team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom goes it out. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. We're halftime of the girls game. Lady Bronx, Lady T-Wolves. T-Town holding a 30-3 lead over Jackson. And we talked in the pregame, we talked 20 days ago at how good this T-Town girls team is. No shame in this score, if you're Jackson, I mean, you got a young team full of underclassmen, freshmen and sophomores. We know they're going to take their lumps this year. It's going to be learning experience. But when you play teams like this, boy, it is just so one-sided. Sometimes you wonder, are these girls learning anything other than the bitter taste of defeat? And Teton is... They're that good, and it's not going to get any easier. We got Pinedale tomorrow, and you want to talk about how good the Pinedale girls are. They just cracked the top five, and I I knew before the season started this was going to be a top five ranked team in 3A. Pinedale girls, for the first time in the coaches' media poll, moved up in the rankings to number five, and I think they could even be ranked higher than that. So we're going to see them tomorrow. It just doesn't get any easier. For these Lady Bronx, tough, tough road. And they've met some strong competition in this Teton team. The Star Valley girls are pretty darn good. Pinedale's that good. And we still haven't seen Cody. And the Cody Phillies are the last remaining undefeated team in high school in the 4A. Nobody's beaten the Cody Phillies and nobody will. You uh. got... You They're managed good. to get any stats over there? Wow, guess what? I did. Is that right? Hold on. I, I don't know how you do it. All Jimmy right. K's got some halftime stats for you, and I can imagine on that score sheet we'll see the usual suspects for Teton. Reese Coons has had a good game. Porter Woods been, yeah, mm. as usual. Morgan Johnson and Grace Hogan, oh. they're all 
I they like really how this girl, spread it. I know. I like how she takes stats over there. Oh, good. She put, if get? they shoot a three and they don't make it, she puts slash through it. So <laughs> ah. it is going to take me a little bit here. Um, I got, oh, there's two. Uh, Reese Coons has six. Okay. Uh, Morgan Johnson, six. Abigail, let's see, two. Three. Uh, Grace, five. I know their last names just got a little double here, so you took it off on me. Um, <laughs> Grace has five. Yeah. Uh, Grace Hogan, yeah. Uh, Kayla Richardson, Kayla Richardson, one. Um, Porter Wood, two, four, six, eight, ten. Yep. Porter Wood, the six foot sophomore. Melissa Bagley, three. Okay. Yeah, they really spread it around there. Porter Wood's going to get her points against anybody. And it's the backcourt, Morgan Johnson and Grace Hogan, that when they're shooting right, um, yeah, I don't know how you stop this Teton team. I don't care who you are, but certainly a tough call for the Jackson Lady Bronx. Who scored for us? I um, Zoe Bosch has two, remember. and Lucy Webb has one. All right, where to go. Again, Lucy Webb playing with that jam finger in her left hand, her non-shooting hand, but that can't feel too good. And Zoe Bosch is just called upon to carry so much of the load for this team. She rarely comes off the floor. She is uh, the point guard carrying the ball up court, dribbling the ball up court uh, every play. Just a lot rides on the freshman Zoe Bosch. She is learning as she goes, and these Lady Bronx are building the airplane as they fly it. I mean, I have to say, it, like, I like what I'm seeing on the floor. Yeah. And I like when they take the shots. And it, it, what frustrates me is even as a fan and for these girls is how close some of those shots are to that yeah. rim and basket. And I'm like, just drop in because they're working so hard. Yeah. Like. I, it's so hard. You, I you just, watch. I don't. But that's why I keep saying we can't. The victories aren't going to yeah. come up on that scoreboard this year. But um, I like what I'm seeing down there. We yeah, threw away the ball you, a few times. Here's the, yeah, and here's the difference. Early in the season uh, on a Bronx possession that didn't get two points. Early in the season, they the first pass inbounds met full court pressure. They would turn it over on a bad pass and two points the other way in a matter of three to five seconds. I got it. Now, Jackson's able to beat that press. They figure out how to make one, two, three passes. They get it down into the front court. But we got to get it make, in the basket. Then they make some good plays. They move the ball around. They they have to face a very good Teton defense. They they get some ball movement going. They do a few things right. They maybe make a pass into the inside of the paint. That girl's double team. She finds the open player, kicks it out to her, and the shot goes up and in rattles in and out. That's the difference between a possession that doesn't get points. In the early days, it was two going the other way before you could blink. Now, later in the season, uh, the possession looks good all the way down the court and until the very end, and they're even getting the shots off, good shots off. Uh, they're just not falling, but that's where we are now, and that is super hopeful. Yeah. That's getting somewhere, I think. And I know Coach Shockley says the th same thing. Every time he says the score is not indicative of the things we're doing well, that's what he's talking about. And I see it, and certainly the effort's there every night. Like I said, I think they're playing really, really good. Now uh, they've turned the ball over a couple times, their passes, you know, not going to the person or the person not watching. But what when they have the ball and they're passing it around and getting from the one end to the other end of the court, and the pro they're doing a fantastic job. Doing some good I stuff. I think they're doing an awesome job. I, like I said, when you see that good stuff, you kind of wish there was a few more points on that scoreboard for such their hard work down here. But that, that scoreboard has just got to be ignored this year. They don't give you points for trying, and they don't give you points for <laughs> a couple of, only but, for scoring. So, yeah. I know, but those points come inside in the victory, and that's what those girls got to be reminded is 
it, it, it's going to be a building process, but they've got to be proud of themselves. Score or no score. Yep. They really do. We'll take one more break. We'll be back with the start of the third quarter. Once again at the half, it's the Lady Timberwolves 30, the Lady Bronx 3. You're enjoying Jackson basketball on Jackson Hole Radio and KZ95. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. This is KZ95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. Back to the live action. Young Life accepting teens for who they are. No strings attached and proud sponsors of our opening lineups this season. Young Life, Jackson Holt. You know a thing or two about that. I huh? do. I was just going to say, high school has a club that meets uh, the second Monday of every month. You want to get involved? You just, uh, what do we do? Uh, go online at Jackson Hole. YoungLife.org, like Allie Lane said. Or if you can find Allie Lane's number, you could just give her a call. Okay. I could say you could get in touch with you, because then you can get in touch, touch with, with me, me, and yeah. I could get in touch with Allie. We could do that, too. You make the first step, we'll meet you halfway. <laughs> we'll find a way to get you we'll in touch. We'll get you in there, yeah. Always We're looking for more people that care about meeting teenagers where they are. Well, these teenagers wearing white tonight have been met just about everywhere by the ones wearing maroon. They've been met at the half court, full court, down low in the paint. Teton has really put on a defensive show. This is such a good defensive day. Remind me of Star Valley, how good they are defensively. Oh, yeah, I'd like to see the two of them play. Yeah. <laughs> Teton giving up 40 points a game, scoring about 51. Like we said, they're coming off a loss. Last time out, they played last Saturday and lost that game. But overall, these Teton Timberwolves 12 and 7, 1 and 2 in conference. Jackson Lady Bronx 0 and 10, 0 and 2 in conference. It'll be Teton ball inbounds by Morgan Johnson. Here's the starting five out there for the home team. As Grace Hogan, the junior, working far side on Lucy Whip, gets it to. Morgan Johnson, a whistle and a reach-in foul. That's going to be on Bosch. She raises her hand, so we all know it's her. Zoe's Ooh, proud to claim third. that foul. <laughs> <laughs> but again, we talk about being more physical, and I, I like it. Good for Zoe. I, if she falls out, I think that's a plus for Jackson. I, I love the way she's been playing Ooh, she tonight. Oh, a double a little dribble. Nice job, Double Zoe. dribble on Morgan Johnson because of the pressure applied by Bosch. So a turnover, Jackson Ball. Just underway here in the third. Bronx down big, 30 to three. Little double team pressure, but Bosch works her way out of it. Takes the shot, no good. Out of bounds, and Sierra Johnson tried to save it, but could not. And again, Zoe Bosch has done that a few times tonight. Whenever she feels double team pressure, rather than make an errant pass, she's just got aggressive and dribbled right through it and gone right to the rack. She's like, if I can get by the two girls guarding me, I'll bet it's clean sailing after that. And she's right. Just got to make the shot to make Teton pay for the double team. Nice inside right hook. And I don't have a 45 on my sheet. I'm not sure who that is, but that was well, beautiful. Let's see if she's on the roster I just took a picture of. Awesome. Thank you. It's uh, Zoe Bosch works it out top. Key to Roper, far side of Webb, right in front of her own bench. Lucy Webb takes a little trip with the ball to this near elbow, right elbow. Now Naomi Roper. Good baseline pass. <laughs> Except Sierra Johnson didn't just go and put it up, and now they'll reset with Bosch out there. Alyssa K is our 40. The 45, Alyssa K. I'll go with that. Alyssa K. Lucy Webb with it now. Jackson's still working around the perimeter, trying to find something inside. Ooh. It just isn't there. It's T Wolf defense pretty good. Lucy Webb, cross court, near elbow. Roper will fire one just off the back so of the close. iron. No good. Good open look, though, Roper Hatch. Just could make it go. And it was that Alyssa Kay with a rebound. And here's Morgan Johnson with it now. Whips it to 
Grace Hogan Ooh. trying to go cross court to Alyssa Kay. It never got there. Good hand on the ball and a steal by Jackson. Johnson was involved. Here comes Zoe Bosch coast to coast. First oh. shot no good. Her own rebound won't go either. Two shots at the basket by Zoe Bosch, both because she was assertive. Just couldn't get the finish. Grace Hogan whips it cross court to Barkdell. Her shot no good. Puts up her own rebound up over Mads Holland, Holland and Sierra Johnson. They had her boxed out, but Abby Barkdell will just not be denied. 34-3, Teton lead. Lucy Webb to Roper. Roper with Grace Hogan on her. Gets it to Johnson. Back to Roper. Roper will drive the lane and now kick out to Webb. Webb top of the key. Met there by Grace Hogan. Far elbow to Bosch, who comes cross court to Webb. Lucy Webb got a baseline cutter. Johnson, nobody saw her. Naomi Roper way out here. Thought about a three, but that was almost a half court shot where she's at. Ooh. Now she's double teamed and a timeout. Sean Shockley wanted to save her as she had the two aggressive guards, Morgan Johnson and Grace Hogan, all over. And Shockley called a quick timeout. We'll go with him. Time out on the floor. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 and the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Jackson Lumber, the board store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available. With names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt, Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Grovant. Call 733-6000. 733-6000. Here's your voice of the Jackson Bronx, Jake Nichols on KZ95. Back to the action, 5.06 to go in the third. It's been all Teton all the time since the beginning, 34-3. Timberwolves settle in on defense, and it'll be triggered in by Zoe Bosch. Works it to Lucy Webb. Webb's got... Morgan Johnson on her. Bosch with the ball now. Triple team that gets it to an open. Oh. Kat Ankeny, who just misses her shot, but a good job to identify the open player. And again, the finish, though, just not there. Grace Hogan with it. Nice backhand bounce pass inside to CeCe Martinez. Now kick out. Up and in, that's Morgan Johnson with a three. And the ball movement exceptional right there for the T-Wolves. 4.30 to go in the third. Zoe Bosch across midcourt. Puts a move on Grace Hogan. Now loses the handle and a jump ball. Both girls put it on. Bosch trying to put a move on Hogan. Almost did, but forgot to bring the ball along. And then Hogan reached in and possession arrow favoring the white girls. That's the Jackson Bronx and their road white. Lucy Webb with the ball now. Webb on Morgan Johnson. Gets it to Bosch. Now to an open Webb. She'll try the three. That's off the glass. Too strong. And a good board there by Alyssa Kay for Teton. CeCe Martinez brings the ball up. Hands off to Grace Hogan. Hogan watched by Webb all the way cross court to an open Barkdale. Nice move to get around two players. One of them was Ankeny. Shot no good, but the rebound, Alyssa Kay. Two tries at it, and Alyssa Kay puts it up and in. Her first one failed, but she just hung with it. She's pretty tall. We don't have numbers on her. But she just out-rebounded the Jackson girls and got it on her second try. Zoe Bosch with the ball. Three and a half to go in the third. Jackson down. 39 to 3. Far side Bosch. Watched by Morgan Johnson. Inside pass attended for Sierra Johnson. Oh. Alyssa Kay, though, swats it out of bounds. It'll be Jackson Ball. Wholesale changes for Coach Hogan. The home team. They send in four fresh troops. CeCe Martinez, the only player remaining. Oh, nope, that's Reese Coons. 
Porter Wood, so a mix of bench and starters. There is a steal, and Brooke Tibbetts coming the other way for Teton. She's in no hurry here, being watched by Webb, far side. Inside pass to Reese Coons, power move in there, and good. She shook away from Sierra Johnson and put it up and in. Coons, really good inside player. And when you've got her at 5'10 and Porter Wood at six foot, these girls can play in the paint with anybody. Pass to Ankeny, back out, long three from Bosch. Good, off the glass, but they'll count it. 41-6, Zoe Bosch, she was open, and that was a NBA three from that range. 41-6 now, T-Town with the lead. They have the ball, Kaya Richardson, bounce pass oh. inside, never got there, stolen away. This is Lucy Webb coming up for Jackson. She's one on three, though, and she'll wait for help, gets it back to Zoe Bosch, who settles things down. Nice steal by Jackson. Sierra Johnson being watched by Reese Koontz, hands it off to Lucy Webb, top of the key, Cat Ankeny. Ankeny back to Webb, near elbow. Her pass intended for Zoe Bosch, who was starting to cut into the lane. And rather than stay where she was, the pass went right where she used to be, right in her vapor trail. Grace Zog will inbounds in front of the Jackson bench. Changes for Coach Shockley. Ankeny comes out along with Zoe Bosch for a breather. Rihanna Rhodes in there now, and Allison Burcham. There's a shot from Kaya Richardson off the back of the iron, no good. Rebound up and in, Porter Wood, and she's been banging the boards tonight. Oh, I think someone forgot they got to help Lucy. <laughs> Webb will inbounds to Rihanna Rhodes. Yeah, it's a little different backcourt without Zoe Bosch, who does most of the ball handling. Rihanna Rhodes or Lucy Webb couldn't figure out what to do with that. Bertram gets it to Roper, back to Webb. She'll try a top of the key oh. three, rattles in and out almost. Brooke Tibbetts on the rebound, all five, two of her, and brings it up across the line. A buck and a half to go here in the third, 43-6 Teton. Far side baseline, back to Tibbetts now. Now near side elbow to Richardson. Her pass to Kuhn, she gets knocked down, but no call. And now Tibbetts makes a nice move in the lane. Kick out, Porter Wood will try a three. That's short, oh. but Coons on the rebound. Up and no good. She got hacked by Allison Burcham, her second foul. And just the second for Jackson this half. But it'll send Coons to the line, and I don't have numbers on her from the charity stripe, but I can't imagine she does anything not very good. Did she just do that one-handed? Yeah, she does okay. a one-handed, tries to keep her left hand out of it. Just the one-hand right shot. If you've ever seen it, yeah, it's interesting. She gets Whoa. the roll there. She makes them both, and it's 45-6 to six with a minute five to go in the third quarter. Lucy Webb with Rihanna Rhodes in the backcourt. Bertram, Roper, and Mads Holland also out there on the floor. Here's Lucy Webb with Tibbetts on her. Cross court pass to Rihanna Rhodes. Puts up a shot. Too short. Saved by Bertram. No, it wasn't. Oh. I'm going to say she was out of bounds. Good hustle by Allison. I thought she had jumped and knocked that ball back into play, but they're going to say she stepped out of bounds. T-Town ball in the waning seconds of the third, 45-6. The Timberwolves been in command the whole way. Inside pass to Coons. Wide open finds uh, Kaya Richardson, who nails it. It's just a two, but it was, a again, a result of good ball movement. Rihanna Rhodes brings it up court for Jackson. 25 seconds to go in the third. Rhodes to Roper. She'll try one from the near angle. That goes in and out. No good. Lucy Webb on the rebound, and she's bumped by Porter Wood. And it's not going to be Wood on the foul, though. They found somebody else to blame it on. And I'm not sure who, but it'll be Jackson Ball. I think it's Kaya Richardson with her second. Sure looked like Wood made the contact. Lucy Webb will inbounds underneath the Jackson basket. Being watched by Grace Zog. Webb looking around, can't find anybody. And bounce pass to oh. Bertram. Beautiful. Allison Bertram nice. got in behind Porter Wood. Wood never saw her. And she put in the easy layup. That was a nice bounce pass 
to Bertram, and she did not miss. Tibbetts, far side of Porter Wood. Five seconds, four on the clock. Wood cross court, wide open as Richardson puts one up at the buzzer, and it won't go. Too strong, and that's how we'll end. After three, it's tee time. 47, Jackson, eight. You're watching and listening to Jackson Bronx Basketball on Jackson Hole Radio. We'll be back with the exciting fourth right after these. Experience Jackson Hole like a local. Recently renovated, the 49er boasts a new lobby, extended continental breakfast, indoor swimming pool, fitness facility, and 12-person outdoor hot tub. Located on Pearl Street, the 49er is just three short blocks from Jackson's greatest bars and restaurants, where you'll find your home away from home. Enjoy your time in Jackson as part of the town square ends and stay at the 49er Inn and Suites. Live play-by-play coverage of Jackson Bronx Sports continues with Jake Nichols on KZ95. Well, unfortunately for Jackson, this game going much like the earlier meeting did back on January 5th between these two teams in Jackson. That one was a 63-17 win for T-Town. This one after three, 47-8. T-Town lead. Coach Hogan sends out his starting backcourt, and that's Johnson and Hogan, along with Abby Barkdale and uh, Cece Martinez has replaced Porter Wood as the big underneath, and Abby Barkdale also out there. It's T-Town ball moving right to left, just underway here in the fourth. Morgan Johnson works it to Melissa Bagley, far side to Barkdale. Barkdale working on Naomi Roper, finds a wide open Johnson. I'm surprised she didn't just put that up. Martinez, nice kick out to Bagley. Really good ball moving here again for T-Town as they go quick around the perimeter. Far side, bounce pass to Martinez. CC Martinez backs out a little now, dribbles in on Sierra Johnson, works it to Morgan Johnson. little shake and bake move there and again Grace Hogan just passing up shots I think that's been a directive that shot up and in that's Melissa Bagley the 5'10 junior and she adds to this Teton lead I have Johnson and Hogan both seem very reluctant to shoot and I think they're working on some things or they would take these shots in a close game Lucy Webb with the ball now for Jackson. Nice pass into Zoe Bosch, who just mm-hmm. misses the left hand of lay in, gets her own rebound, and that one won't go either. But Jackson's still with the ball. Lucy Webb will try. In, she's got it. Three. Lucy Webb with a 15 4. I thought it was just a two, no. but yeah, you're right. They put their hands up. That was Farther three. out than I thought. Lucy Webb with a three to make it 49-11. CeCe Martinez lost the handle on that pass out of bounds. That'll give Jackson the ball. That was pretty good offensive boards there for Jackson to give themselves numerous looks until finally Lucy Webb converts. Zoe Bosch brings it across midcourt, watched by Grace Hogan. Lost the handle momentarily, and now she needs help. Yeah, come Nobody on. coming to help her, and a timeout Shockley, and that's the first thing he's going to tell these girls. He's talked to me about it as well. When you've got a girl who's picked up her dribble and needs someone to pass to, you've got to come to her. You've got to yep. come to the ball. Nobody did. Everybody kept doing what you would do if you were trying to, you know, get open but right. you have got to help your ball carrier when they're in trouble. And I guarantee you that's what Shockley is saying on that far sideline is go to the girl, go to the ball and help out the ball carrier. Like as I said, I, I love what I've seen different from the last couple of games to here, but now we got to work on going to the ball. Well, so many things going to, to work. <laughs> that's go to the one ball of them. next. I want to see the you go to the ball. The ball is your friend. Go get it. Go to the ball. 49 to 11. Teton lead this one at home. It's the back half of a home and home with a non conference game. It's kind of weird schedule makers, what they've done. But we got underway in conference play last weekend, had two games Star Valley and Green River back to back conference games. Now we play two non conference games this one tonight and then tomorrow night against Pinedale. And 
We talked about how good those Lady Wranglers are at Pinedale. Uh, we will not be on the air with that game tomorrow. So if you get a chance to see the game, get on down there. It's at home, Jackson whole high school and boy if just to see the Pinedale girls play they are really talented Jackson with the ball Mads nice. Holland pitch it to Zoe Bosch nice give and go Naomi Roper top of the key far side of Webb Webb working on Morgan Johnson gets it back to Mads Holland near side nice. Roper in the elbow just nothing open every time a girl gets the ball she's pounced on immediately here's Zoe Bosch pass inside of Webb she'll try a shot oh. off the front of the iron no good sure. and a nice idea by Webb, though. She was open for that little 15-foot pop shot, just left it short. Here's Grace Hogan. Bounce pass into Alyssa Kay. Now to Barktill. Near side of Morgan Johnson. Again, she's their three-ball specialist. That's her shot, but she won't take it. She takes this one. A little runner in the lane. No good. Rebound is up and in. Melissa Bagley. And good job on the boards by Bagley, the 5'10 junior. They got a lot of length to them. Two girls at 5'10, mm -hmm. one at 6 foot. Naomi Roper to Zoe Bosch. Bosch, far side of Webb. She's wide open, puts it up and in. Lucy Webb. Woo, that's seven points for her. 51 14. I love the ball movement and I love the shot taking. That was the open girl, Webb. And somehow that was. I believe Bagley's assignment they're playing man on for Webb was open for a minute, and that's all it took. Lucy knocked it down, and now a foul here, a charge on Teton. That's going to go against Grace Hogan, her first, team fourth. It'll turn the ball over to Jackson. Foul's not really been an issue for either team, been barely any. Lucy Webb with the ball now, 2-3 zone, Teton's shrunk back into with Alyssa Kay acting as the center for T-Top. Naomi Roper inside pass to Mads Holland, kicks it out to an open web, and it's too high off her hands. And that's another bad pass from Holland. She has got to get better. Webb was the open girl, but Mads has got to make those passes more accurate because Webb was ready to fire. Wholesale changes again for Coach Hogan on the Teton side of things as he sits most of his starters now. Porter Wood is in there with Reese Kuhn, so he likes to keep a mix of starters and bench. Oh, Brooke Tibbetts from range drains a three. Where did she come from? And it's 54-14, back to a 40-point lead for the T-Wolves. Three and a half to go in regulation. Zoe Bosch with the ball, a cutting roper, but she works it instead to Sierra Johnson. Bounce pass to Webb, now looking for Mads Holland inside off the hands of Coons out of bounds, and Jackson will retain possession. Coach Shockley will send in Allison Burcham, Kat Ankeny, and Harley Rommel as he makes wholesale changes on the other side of things. Inbounds pass coming from Zoe Bosch. Bosch and Roper, the two starters out there. And they're the other three bench players. Bosch looking for somebody. Can't Ooh. find anything She's open. She's got to get it off of somewhere. And she runs out of time. Bosch just reluctant. Couldn't find anybody open. That's a case where you got three girls off the bench. You don't play a ton. And Bosch has not worked with them a ton, and you just weren't on the same page as far as anybody getting open, and that's a turnover for Jackson. Unforced error, as they say. Tibbetts works it to near side of Zog. She goes cross court for her teammate Kaya Richardson. Richardson, the junior, or the senior, rather, back to Kaya Richardson inside Porter Wood with a really nice move, but she left that shot short. Ankeny fights with a rebound with Kaya Richardson is out of bounds off Ankeny. So T-Town with the ball. Brooke Tibbetts hot off that three she just hit. Will inbounds to Wood. Porter Wood in lane. Kick out to Coons. Now far side to Richardson. T-Town's looking for that perfect shot. Nice ball movement there into Porter Wood who puts it up and in. They really can move that ball in a hurry. Minute 52 to go in regulation. 56-14. Jackson Trail. So he bought with the ball for the Bronx. Works it into Mo to Burcham. Allison Burcham with a shot up and in. The sophomore answers. Jackson down 40. That's as big as the... That's been the lead, really, for the last quarter. About 40 points. Here's Brooke Tibbet with the ball. Tibbetts 
to Kaya Richardson, near side to Koontz, Reese Koontz. Inside pass to Wood, power move, she's double teamed. She's gonna try it anyway, rebound. and oh. almost got it to go. Rebound, no good from Kaya Richardson, but she gets a little contact there. She draws the foul, and that'll send her to the line. The foul is on Zoe. No, I think it was on oh, no. Allison Bertram. Yep. It is Bircham, her third to the line is Richardson, the senior. Her first one is off the front of the iron, short. Running time now, we're under a minute. Second one coming from Kaya Richardson, the 5'4 senior. That's short as well. Rebound, Harley Rommel, and she loses the handle, but that's last off of Reese Coons, who poked it loose. Jackson Ball, 56-16, they trail. Bosch inbounds here to Rommel, who gives it back. Zoe up across midcourt. Down to 32 seconds. Bosch taking her time here. Picks up the dribble. And now Ooh. looking for somebody open. She wanted Harley Rommel, but getting in the way of that pass was Kaya Richardson. The senior knocks it out of bounds. Jackson ball. Zoe Bosch will inbounds right here near side. Get open. Bosch looking for Roper. Nice bounce pass to her. That was a pretty pass. Roper, another oh. nice bounce pass to Kat Ankeny, but stealing it away is Porter Wood. She'll go coast to coast, up and no good, and draws the foul. It didn't look like they were going to whistle that until they saw it didn't go in. Mm, that did the end. And that will do it anyway with running time. That will end the contest. So the final score, T-Town 56. Jackson 16 in a game very similar to their first meeting just 20 days ago. We'll be back to wrap things up here in a moment. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on Jackson Hole Radio and KZ95. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes the dynamite. And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So, crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. The white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom, goes the dynamite. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. This is KZ95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. Well, the dynamite did not go boom near enough for the Jackson girls. Teton Lady Timberwolves victorious in this one. Once again, the final 56-16 in favor of Teton to close out a home and home as the Teton Lady Timberwolves with that win will improve their overall record to 13 and seven. For the Lady Bronx, they now fall to 0 and 11 on the season and extend that losing streak to 28 games. But we saw a lot of positives on the girls side of things. We talked about them during the game. They're starting to do things a little better. They're starting to do basketball things, really. Uh, when you watch them, they're starting to do very much basketball things. And it's just a matter of finishing with some execution, but they're learning and they're getting there. Very slowly, though. Be hard to. I'd, I'd just love to see these girls get up off the mat, though, night after night and get back after it. And they're going to have to put this one behind them mentally because they play again tomorrow against Pinedale at home. What do we got for the final stats, real quick? Our home team, what did they do? The Teton Timberwolves. Our home team. Sorry. I liked it last Saturday. They added it up. Um, oh, you actually have to do some math. I got to do some math. Um, we got Brooke Tibbetts, three. That was a nice three by her. Um, Reese Coons, four, six, eight, ten. Uh, Reese Coons, yeah. Morgan, is it Johnson? Yeah. Um, let's see, three, three, six, 
six. I got a feel of Morgan Johnson and Grace Hogan both kind of held back a little bit. Both juniors are going to be around next year. That's scary. Abigail's two, three, four, five, five points. Oh my gosh, Grace Hogan. She got five, five. Uh, Kyra Richardson, what do we got? Three, three. Uh, Porter Woods, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Yeah. Uh, Melissa, who's that Bagley? Bagley. Yeah. She had two, four, six. And Alyssa had four. Alyssa K. Okay. All right. Well, they spread it around pretty good. And for the Jackson Bronx, Lucy Webb hit a few big ones. She led all scorers on our side. Let's see. Zoe had five. Allison Bertram had four. Uh, Lucy Webb, what was it? Seven. And I think that's it. Yep. Player of the game from T-Town. I'll go Porter Wood, but I really like Reese Coons' game. Um, I'll go Porter. All right. Player of the game for the Lady Bronx. Lucy. Lucy Webb. Scored yeah. it. She's out there still with her Even hand. With an injury. Yes. Yeah. I mean, again, I like what I saw by those girls. Just, yep. Yeah, same. All right. We'll be back. That'll wrap it up for the girls. We'll be back with the reset and the boys coming up. Tap time just about 10 minutes away. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on Jackson Hole Radio and KZ95. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. This is KZ95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. Back to the action as get, we get ready to start this boys game and some interesting drama going on uh, with this game that we'll tell you about in just a minute. But uh, for the Jackson boys, obviously on a three-game winning streak, they want to keep this train rolling. They're come in with a record under Cage Hayden Hanfield, an overall record of eight and two. They're unbeaten in conference, two and zero, oh, and the new rankings came out and the coaches. Media poll has Jackson ranked number four. Only Riverton at number three right ahead of them. And uh, and then who is it? East and yeah. uh, somebody else. Cheyenne. I remember seeing East and Cheyenne okay. up there. So it had to be East, Cheyenne, Riverton, Jackson. Jackson coming off two statement wins last week in important games. They beat Star Valley. Both those games statements because they really exercised some demons. Star Valley had this hold over Jackson for years. <laughs> and the Bronx finally able to beat the Braves at home in a thriller, 73-65. And then went back-to-back uh, -back nights, went to Green River on the road and beat Green River 76-66. So Sorry. two in a row, uh, the Bronx are on. If you go back to that Pindo win, it's three in a row. So I know Jackson will love to keep that going, keep momentum going. They'd also love to get a little revenge on these Teton Timberwolves, who Teton did come in and beat Jackson back on January 5th, 54-42, in a game I know Jackson would like to have back. That game at the time broke a three-game winning streak for Jackson, and Teton would love to do that again. Another uh, tough thing facing Jackson is this Teton team is unbeaten at home. They're 6-0 at home. 
14 and two overall. They're on a one game win streak. They just beat Ryrie last night in a wild one, 66-65. So Teton's playing back-to-back -back nights. Will fatigue become a factor, especially for a team that really only plays seven guys? They do not tap a very deep bench. No, and we'll tell you why there. that's even more important is in last night's game, Thomas Hoosvelt, one of their uh, star players, the junior, was double technical. He was rung up for a couple of technicals, which Ooh. means if it's a game in Wyoming, if that's a Wyoming thing, the Wyoming rule is you have to sit out a suspension. And uh, I know we were waiting. That was going to be a game time decision whether the Idaho officials would allow Tom Hoosevelt, number 12, we could find him down there, whether he's going to play or not. And we just we don't know yet. We'll keep an eye on that. But if Hoosevelt can't go, he's fairly key to their game plan. But okay. even more importantly, he that's another body removed from the team. Ooh, I will tell you right now, I do not see a number 12 out there warming up. Yeah, that's that's going to make it a little easier for Jackson because this team does not use Robert who's about the coach does not utilize a very deep bench he rides his starting five almost exclusively you'll see a little bit of Davis Wood the senior the big kid and uh, outside of that maybe a little of Jack Nelson but they really ride their starting five so without who's about that's a big hole in the lineup and playing back-to-back -back nights that could take its toll and that's one of the reasons why you'll see our keys to the game in a minute but first, I want to uh, let you in on a little talk with Coach Hayden Hatfield. We talked to him about how things went last weekend. Uh, that game against uh, Star Valley Friday, I know the Star Valley announcers, Duke Dance, says, who is this number 24? That's <laughs> Gavin Keelan, who is playing the next man up role. Yeah. And then the team goes to Green River, and a team that couldn't make a three if their life depended on it suddenly couldn't miss a three. Uh, Mac Fairbairn had five for 15 points on the night. A.J. Fowler resurrected had from five. the dead. <laughs> had five for 15 points on the night. So, uh, yeah, next man up theory is going for Coach Hatfield. He says, hey, that was the game plan from the very beginning. Yeah, that's kind of, you know, this this is the, you know, what we expected going into this season. We had a lot of shooters, a lot of guys that could fill in some roles here and there. You know, it wasn't going to be the same guy every night. So it took us a little bit to get here, but uh, I think we're, we're finally finding, you know, our groove here. And that's uh, kind of by design, you know, we all want, we develop these shooters, want to, want to have them in the arsenal. Um, you just never know who's man it's going to be. Yeah, so one thing that Jack said, it's great to see them spread the scoring around. It's great to see how these teams are starting games. They were up on on Star Valley, I think, 25 to 5 after the first quarter. I mean, they are getting off to fast starts in the first half. The problem is the second half. We're not finishing. And I, I asked strong. Coach Haffield, what do you do? Do you keep pressing offensively? Is that what you should do? Should you slow the game down? and kind of rely what what is going on with the second half of this team don't think Hatfield does not <laughs> is not aware that those final uh, uh, 16 minutes are really tense here's what he had to say well we've had a couple of different approaches you know so far this week we've kind of that's kind of been our you know what we've focused on here um, you know we've put in a little delay offense for one thing we've also just kind of showed the guys what happened in the second half uh, both games so um, you know, it's a combination of all things, turnovers. Um, honestly, I don't think we get bad shots. Um, I think our offense is fine during those, um, you know, second quarter or second half meltdowns, but you know, I think it's just kind of the turnovers. We got to slow down a little bit when, when they speed us up, it's not time for us to go faster either. Uh, you know, they speed us up, we get to slow down a little bit. So I think it's just a combination of, you know, taking the right shots still, you know, Staying under control in the backcourt, um, not rushing. Uh, just know that you know it's our game still. You know, play our game, but do it a little, a little more under control than what we would like. That's funny because before I talked to Coach Hayden Hatfield, my keys to the game included slow the pace late. 
In the second half, there's no reason to run and get fast and cough the ball up. Uh, I also put as a key to the game, don't force shots. Jackson has not been forcing shots. I want that to continue. They've looked like a team that's really free and easy. It doesn't look like any one guy feels he has to take that impossible shot. They're finding the open look, and they're making those shots really loose. I, and I, I love it. I was going to say Saturday they did. It was spread yeah. around. I mean, not just like the 15 three points, but yeah. like – I feel like I think everyone scored except for maybe like what one per player out there. I feel yeah. like everyone scored on Saturday. So that's and a big deal. Finally, the third key to the game is don't be afraid to be a bully. If you're Jackson, this team beats you on your court. Your attitude coming here is that's <laughs> unacceptable. Want some revenge tonight. Also, being a bully means being physical, and that means taking fouls and giving fouls. I don't mind getting in a foul contest with this team, especially if they're without Thomas, who's about, and they have a thin bench. I would love to see a physical game where a lot of whistles. I think that'll help a team that has a deep bench like Jackson. One last thing Coach Hatfield talked about again, uh, about this Teton team. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a few things here. I mean, I, I've never seen our guys this confident as we have been this week in practice so far, uh, which is great. This is exactly what we want after beating Star Valley and, you know, a good Green River team. Um, you know, they, they should have confidence, and they do. Um, I think that, you know, some teammates are trusting other teammates more now because we've seen them produce a little more. Um, so all in all, confidence is high. Um, you know, going into Teton, you know, is it – they let us know uh, last time when they beat us at home that, you know, those seniors are 7-0 and, uh, and 0 against us. So um, I think that one stuck with our guys a little, and they have a – I think they're prepared for tonight to go in there and try to get it done. Yeah, I love that. That's that a little bit of their revenge factor, a little bit of be a bully. Uh, this Teton team – if you're a senior on the Timberwolves, you've never lost to Jackson. You don't know what it's like That's to true. lose to Jackson. So, yeah, I, I think that I don't it's, like the phrase be a bully, but that's just the teacher in me, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, be tough. I, I think it's, you Aggressive. know, just tough. Exercise a little, you know, physicality. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Let's uh, let's let the boys introduce themselves. The starting lineups, as always, brought to you by Young Life of Jackson Hole. What's up, Ryan? Junior. Yeah, yeah. Max Fairbairn, senior. AJ Fowler, junior. Owen Connor, junior. Uh, Carson Harlan, senior. Isaac Larson, senior. Paul Marlinson, sophomore. Andrew Hamm, junior. Gavin Kilo, junior. Christian Mack, senior. Drew Rebel, senior. Chris Woodray. Now just about ready to get things going here in Jackson with the national anthem and the starting lineups. Maybe they do they do another anthem? Maybe they don't. I'm not sure, but we'll keep an eye on things. Teton coming into this game, as we said, unbeaten at home, six and all. Timberwolves are 14 and two overall. They're coming off a win last night against Ryrie in a game that came down to the wire, 66-65. And in that game, Thomas Hoosevelt, the junior, received two technical fouls, and that makes uh, that means you're ineligible for one game. He's sitting out a game suspension tonight, so that's good news for Jackson. He's a key part of the game for Coach Robert Hoosevelt. He'll have the other Hoosevelt out there, Jerome, the senior, but not Tom, the junior, who is kind of their three-ball guy. Jackson comes in with an 8-2 record over all two and all in conference and a three game winning streak that they will love to keep rolling. Oh, yep. No, uh, they just said we'll forego the because they started the national anthem before the girls' game. So here we go. All right. We've already had a national anthem. I so like we'll... he keeps calling us the Jackson Broncos. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to get our name right by the time we leave the building tonight. You're going to know who we are. You better find out. Seth Brunner gets tap of the start. A.J. Fowler, good to see him. He was stone cold to start the new year. Yeah, but he was. Boy, he found his stroke in Green River. 
Isaac Larson also in the backcourt. That's three guards that can hurt you in a lot of different oh. ways. <laughs> Andrew Hanna gets a big hug from Dad, the assistant coach. And Gavin Keelan, the sudden emergence of Gavin Keelan, the swingman, has been super hot. He had two good games, Star Valley and Green River. He was off the charts. Yeah, we'll see who is named the starter without Hoosevelt. It'll probably be Davis Wood. No, well, looks like it'll maybe be Jack Nelson, the 5'10 junior. Jerome, Jerome, I guess. Jerome. I always call him Jerome. Jerome Hoosevelt, the 6'1 senior, also out there. Brody Hess, he's their three ball guy, the 6'3 senior, dangerous from distance. Tyson Brown. Tyson Brown is a flat out athlete, the junior 6'5. Coach Joyce, the football coach for the Bronx, now going to the Timberwolves, yeah. says, Ty Brown, you have no idea what an athlete this guy is. He's an animal. The way Davis the announcer just Wood. announced him, I got that. <laughs> Ty Brown is, he's tough. Davis Wood is their uh, big man at 6'8. He's Porter Wood's brother. We just talked to, about Porter Wood. Ah, oh, Porter Davis, got it. Yeah, this is how Porter got so good playing against her, <laughs> her brother, I guess. We're ready to go, and uh, in their home dark colors, it's Teton and the dark maroon and the kind of orange trim. Jackson in the road whites trimmed in black and orange. Right. Jackson moving right to left. Hannah tapping with Wood, and Davis Wood actually beats him on the tap, so... T-Town with a ball to start. Worked inside of Brody Hess. Kicks it out. Long range. It's going to be Jack Nelson for three. And Jack Nelson gives the T-Wolves a quick 3 nothing lead. Seb Brunner across the line being guarded by Nelson. Works it to Hannah. He's wide open for a moment. Puts a move on Wood. Now into the lane. His shot won't go. And the rebound. Nice fight for it by Ty Brown. Comes down with it. So Hannah, good move. Just couldn't get it to fall. And now it's T-Town ball. Wood kicks it out. This Nelson again. That three ball won't go. And Gavin Keelan in a battle with Ty Brown for it, but it goes into the hands of Seb Brunner. He tracks down the loose ball. He's got it. Ooh. Double team trap, and he bounces it right <laughs> off of Brody Hess, the senior, in order to save himself, and he does. Jackson ball down 3 0, just underway here in the boys' game. Gavin Keelan thought about a three, still wants to take it, but he won't. Fowler, Larson, mm. Brunner, he'll take the baseline three. Oh. That's off the back of the iron, no good. Seb gets his own rebound. Kick out to Keelan, AJ's open, but into Hannah. Look out, Hannah on Brown, oh. and Porter came over to reject him, got all ball. Seb drives the lane, kick over oh. to Hannah, his shot no good. Hannah gets his own board up against three players, and any of the three could have committed the foul, but it's going to be Hess. I believe it is his first team first. Hannah right now can't quite find the feel underneath. He's been battling. He'll go to the line where he misses the first. This has been He's got it. He's his one up. Achilles heel is the free throws. 6.48 to go in the first. Home team up 3-0, mm. and he misses both. And the rebound is Wood. Davis Wood works it to Jerem Huzevelt. The senior, Hoosevelt driving on Larson. Now we'll kick it over to Jack Nelson. He had that three right now. He's the game's only scorer oh, thus far. Nice that pass seven. stolen away by Seb Brunner. Intended for Hess. Oh. Brunner has the ball stripped away by Jack Nelson. Out of bounds. That's going to be off Hannah's hands. And it'll be tea time ball. I wish Seb would have looked up because Isaac did get down there and was open right, right. Jackson to me playing a little tight here early. So is Teton a bit. It's only Jack Nelson who's felt cool enough to drain a three. There's Nelson. He's rejected by Keelan. Got all ball, but Brody Hess with the rebound. And he makes it 5 nothing. Isaac Larson drives the baseline, kicks it out to Keelan. Over here, near side elbow to Seb Brunner. Seb to Andrew Hanna. Backs Ty Brown into the lane. Now to Larson. Over to oh, Fowler to Keelan. And Fowler gets fouled. That'll be on Jack Nelson. He'll pick up his first. 
Good ball movement by Jackson, but also very good defense by Teton here early. You wonder how long they can keep that up, playing this tight a man-to-man after having played last night. Gavin Keelan puts a step move on Brown, drives the lane. His shot too strong, and the rebound goes to Hess. Here comes Teton up 5-0. They have the ball here at home. Brody Hess, good start at home for the Timberwolves. The lefty puts one up. Hess has got it, and that's what he does. Three ball, and it's 8-0. As Brody Hess makes the shot, Seb Brunner with it now. Seb Brunner makes a move on Jack Nelson, oh, tries nice. the lane, and a nice feed to Hannah, who's up and in with the left hand. Jackson answers, 8-2. Jerem Husevelt calls for a screen. He's going to get it from Wood. And now wiggles loose. Pass oh. into Wood. Nice give and go. Wood pop shot. No good. Hannah sky high for the rebound. Jackson ball. Seb Brunner up ahead to Fowler. He's in his spot. Baseline three. Oh. And that fails to draw iron. That's the shot A.J. wants. He was open, but that was not a good shot. Yeah, was Brody shot. Hess drives the lane. Up and in. Brody Hess makes it 10 nothing. And Teton on a run here to start. Coach Hatfield hands on hips far side. Not happy with Wood. What he's seeing. Seb Brunner works right through a double team, splits the two, and then hands off to AJ. Gets it back. Brunner, near side elbow to Keelan. He thought about a three, won't take it. Brunner kicks it back out to Keelan. Top of the key, three is in. Gavin Keelan rattled in and fell down. Finally, it's 10 5, cuts the lead in half. Teton ball. Jack Nelson, the 5'10 junior. Sorry, that's Brody Hess, who hands off to Nelson. Number 11 and number one. I just see the one, and I. <laughs> Jerem Husevelt with a down oh, far side of Wood. Wood gives a nice, easy pass in the lane. Good spin move by Ty oh. Brown, but he can't get it to go. Nice defense Ooh. by Gavin Keelan to deny Wood an easy look. Look, or Brown, rather, and Ty Brown couldn't sink it. Gavin Keel, a nice step move on Hoosevelt, but can't get around him. Now hands off to Seb Brunner. Brunner, spin move in the lane. He'll put up uh, a 15-footer. Good, um, but he walked, I think. Now he carried They're the ball. They're going to say carried. So the shot will not count. 340 to go, 10-5. T-Town in the early lead. Jackson backs off into half-court defense here. And bringing the ball up is Caden Hastings in the game now for T-Town. He doesn't see a ton of action. Gets a screen from Ty Brown. Gets it back. Ty Brown with it. Top of the key now. Watched by Gavin Keela. Near side elbow. That pass intended for Hess, but thrown away by Ashton Gunther, who's in off the bench. And the turnover will give Jackson the ball. Keelan to Brunner. A little bit of pressure here. We'll see if they back off. Gunther is looking at Brunner, but Brunner across the line. Gets a screen from Hannah. Now Brunner spin move. Got nowhere to go. Gives it to Isaac Larson, to Keelan, to AJ. He doesn't want it. Keelan says, I'll try the three, and it rattles in and out. Hannah with the rebound. Up and in, and he gets fouled as well. Over the back, it was... Max Thomas, who's in the game, the 6'3 senior over the back of Hannah. And I don't mind that. I think you can get these Timberwolves into foul trouble. And they're going to have trouble. You look over their bench, they got just three players sitting on the bench. As Hannah misses on the three point try, or three point play, it's 10 7 now. Hess runs over Isaac Larson, and Larson draws the foul. It'll be a charge on Brody Hess. That's, boy, they're showing that's his third. That can't be. That's the team's fifth. Hess no. is coming out. Maybe it is. That is, yeah. Brody Hess with three, and I like that if you're Jackson. Play physical. Take Ooh. fouls, give fouls, make it a foul kind of game. You're going to win that kind of a game. A.J. Fowler, Brunner to Isaac Larson. Back to Seb at the top of the key to Isaac. Isaac's got Hannah, finds him in the down low post to the left block. Hannah picks up a oh, double team. Oh, oh. Ty Brown now threw it away. Scramble hey, for the ball. Hannah gets it Woo. back to A.J. A.J. had a shot, but he doesn't want it. Larson will try. Go! Isaac Larson is tied it at 10 with the three. AJ reluctant to shoot right now. Keep an eye on number five for Jackson. He just isn't feeling it, doesn't want it. Driving the lane here by Jerem Husevelt, and he gets contacted by a couple of Jackson Bronx. 
that's okay. Make life miserable for anybody who wants to go in the paint. And sure enough, Coach Hatfield will pull A.J. now and replaces him with Mac Fairborn, Fairbairn, who had a hot hand in Green River. Oh, oh. Teton ball. I thought he almost it got that from behind Caden his back. Caden <laughs> Hastings, the 6'2 junior, drives the baseline on Fairbairn. Mac playing pretty good defense, but they're going to whistle him there. That's okay. Aggressive defense. You don't want to give up an easy shot like that. That would have been a lay-in for Hastings, but Fairbairn got a piece of him. His first team fifth. Both teams now with five fouls. Sorry, that's team second only on the Bronx. And the first one missed by Hastings. We're still tied at 10. Teton got off to a good start, but Jackson took it all in stride and has answered. Hastings makes the back end. They make it 11-10 Teton. Seth Brunner with the ball. Jackson could take the lead for the first time tonight with a bucket here. Brunner working on Jerem Husevel. Tries the lane up and over the top of Ty Brown. No good, but Hannah with a rebound. Bronx will get another look at it. Hannah working on Brown. Backs him into the lane. Left-hander, no good. Good defense by Brown. And it's Husevel with a rebound. T-Tie coming the other way. Ty Brown drives underneath. And a reverse layup up and in. That was a desperate shot, but it worked. Good defense by Gavin Keeley. Couldn't have done much more than that. But Ty Brown just flung it up there in the reverse layup and put it up and in. 13-10. Teton lead. Brunner with a three. Rattles in and out. Ty Brown with a rebound. Rips it away from Gavin Keeley. Refs letting him play. 125 to go in the opening frame. Teton up three. Ashton Gunther, the 5'8 senior, floats one inside to Husevel, but he can't connect. Oh. And Gavin Keeler with a rebound. Pressure here from Teton as Brunner working against Ashton. Ashton Gunther gets it over to Keelan to Isaac Larson. 103 to go in the first. Bounce pass inside to Hannah. He gets double team. Hannah's going to kick one out to a wide open Fairbairn. He'll try a three off the back of the iron. No good. Hannah with the rebound, though. Oh. Jackson, now he threw it away right to Hastings. Coming the other way is Ashton Gunther up and in. And Hannah with a careless pass there. And the turnover is costly. 15 10 T Tut. Keelan with the ball. Gavin Keelan. Fires near side to Seb Brunner at the elbow inside of the oh. free throw line to Hannah to Larson. Bounce pass oh. back to Hannah, and he lost the handle, got stripped of it. Ball's loose, oh. picked up oh, by Husevelt, who's up and in. And oh, you got to get a timeout here if you're Hatfield. 17 to 10 now. And Hatfield just puts up his arms and. He's halfway out onto the court. He didn't like the foul. I guess there's a foul on that as well. That's on Gavin Keelum. It'll send Hayes, uh, Husevel to the line for a chance at a three-point play here. It, he can't convert. Keelum with a rebound. 24 seconds to go in the first quarter. Isaac Larson with the ball. Jackson barely surviving this opening eight minutes. Keelan tries the lane. Euro step up and in. Gavin Keelan with a power Euro move to make it 17-12. Under 10 seconds now. T-Town with the ball. Ashton Gunther and a reach in foul on no charge. Brunner. Oh, they're going to get, they're gonna get Gunther on the charge or maybe out of bounds. No charge. No, they haven't put the foul up oh, on the board. Maybe. Jackson, there's four seconds. Brunner has got to do something quickly here. Go. Seb puts it up at the buzzer. No good. And that's how the first quarter will end with the home team 17. And the Jackson Bronx 12 will be right back with the second quarter. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on Jackson Hole Radio. Live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Bronx basketball is brought to you in part by the Elk Country Inn. Coming May of 2020, the Elk Country will offer new rooms and amenities. The new expansion will bring a brand new indoor-outdoor swimming pool, indoor and outdoor spas, a new dining area with complimentary breakfast, conference facilities, and so much more. Located on Pearl Street, you'll be able to leave the car and walk to Jackson's greatest shopping, dining, entertainment, bars, and breweries. Live like a local at the new Elk Country Inn, coming this May. You're watching and listening to live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Sports on KZ95. Back to the action, first quarter in the books. It's T-10 17, Jackson 12. Bronx looked tight to me, a little tight. 
They have the basketball. Keelan will inbounds in the backcourt to Seb Brunner. Brunner's got Jack Nelson on him. Nelson back of the games now. Nursing three foul or it's no, I'm sorry, Passes. it's Brody Hess who's got the three fouls. Brunner floats one in the lane. That's off the back of the iron. No good. Loose ball. Fairbairn picks it up. He gets double team tackled, oh. and boy, are they letting him play. No, no whistle there for a jump ball, and T-Town will rip it away. Nelson works it to Huzevelt. Far side three from Hess. No good. Sorry, that was Hastings. Oh. But they get the rebound. Thomas will try one. Max Thomas, that's no good, and Keelan pulls down the board. 17-12, five-point lead for Teton. Jackson the ball. Keelan thought about a three. Now he's going to drive the lane, and I thought he walked. He did. It'll be a travel turnover there for Jackson. The Bronx just look a little tight to me and just don't look loose. This Timberwolf team has a way of doing that to you, playing in their own gym. It's a good basketball team. As we said, they're on the season 14 and two, they're unbeaten in this gym. T-Town with the ball, Hastings, bounce pass inside to Max Thomas. Thomas behind the back, dribble, now puts one up, shot no good. Gavin Keelan with another board, leads all Bronx and rebound. I got do that in my head. Fairbairn baseline three, that's off the back of the iron, no good. Everything that fell in Green River, not going now. Jack Nelson oh. with a Euro drive down the lane. His shot never got off as Fairbairn oh. comes up with a loose ball. Pass ahead to Carson Harlan, seeing his first action. Cross court to Fairbairn. Baird. Puts Hastings in the air, drives, and now he's going to get hit on the arm. And Caden Hastings will pick up the foul. That's the Teton Timberwolves sixth. And Jackson on the bonus now will be going to the line for the rest of the half. 6.31 to go in the half. 17-12, five-point lead for Teton. Hannah will inbounds right in front of the Teton bench. Far side into Seth Brunner. Brunner back to Hannah. He drives the lane. Kick out pass to a wide open Harlan. And he hits the three. And maybe that's our guy from distance. 17-15. Carson Harlan doing what A.J. and Fairbairn can't so far. And that's hit a three. Teton with the ball. They have that two-point lead with 6-10 to go in the second. Hastings, he'll try a shot. Sorry, that's Max Thomas, and he makes it. The 6'3 senior was left kind of unguarded, hit a 15-footer, no problem. 19-15, lead back to four. Seth Brunner drives the lane, watch the kick out here. Can't find anybody, now he does. Mac Fairbairn, long three, no good, too strong. Rebound, that's off Thomas, who reached yeah. over the back of Hannah and knocked it out of bounds. He lucky he didn't get a reach uh, over I was thinking that foul. too. That's what it should have been. Willis Witherite in the game now for for Jackson. They got Witherite, Fairbairn, Harlan, Hannah, and Brunner. Hannah with the ball now over to Fairbairn. Perimeter passing. Brunner back pass. Nice little bounce pass. Oh. Hannah looking for Witherite. Threw it away. Andrew Hannah has been a little careless with the passing. That's the third pass from Hannah that hasn't found its mark. Long three there from Davis Wood. No good. Rebound. Hoosevelt will try a long three. That won't go either. And a rebound. Loose ball. Back Fairbairn has it. Now he does it. Hastings cannot save oh. it. It's out of bounds. Sorry, I got so excited watching it. I didn't move the camera. <laughs> <laughs> the ball was going, rolling away. And I didn't do Four it. <laughs> point lead for the T Wolves as it got scrambly there. Hastings and Thomas will come out. Replace our, we'll get our another look at Ashton Gunther, who plays really good defense. My goodness, he's on Brunner usually. He is nasty. Out to Gavin Keelan, being watched by Jack Nelson. Keelan puts a move on him, kick out past a Brunner. He's out to Harlan. Good move. Keelan, top of the key three. Just oh. a bit short. Couldn't get the roll. And Ty Brown with a rebound. I think these Bronx need to get some more of those rebounds. Just over five to go in the half. Teton up four. 19-15. Nelson with the ball. Far side elbow to Hoosevelt. Back to Nelson. Those two pitch and catch cross court now in the back court. Back to Ashton Gunther. Gunther works it to 
Nelson inside pass to Teddy for Wood, and that's intercepted with a right with a steal. Hands off to Brunner, and now Jackson will try to cut into that lead. 19-15, Teton. Brunner not in a hurry, works it to Harlan. Harlan cross court, wide open. Keelan puts a move, drives the lane, and boy, I thought he walked again. He did not, never got the shot off, and Hoosevelt with a rebound. He'll bring it up, Jerome Hoosevelt, Jerem. Jerem puts a move on Brunner, kick out to Gunther, to Hoosevelt. He'll try an 18-footer, too short, rebound with a right. Hands off to Fairbairn, takes a look behind him, thought he was being followed. He was, but it was his own guy, Harlan. Now a three-pointer oh. from Keelan, no good. And Jackson cannot buy a shot right now, but the good news is neither can Teton. Far side pass in the lane. Jack Nelson, his shot doesn't go either. Ty Brown with a tough rebound. With a right battling him. Stolen away. Carson Harlan goes coast to coast. His yes. shot is good. J Jerem Hoosevelt was on him like a glove, but Harlan put it up and in at a timeout. And now Coach Hatfield is clapping encouragement, likes better what he's seeing. The timeout called by Coach Hoosevelt of T-Town as he wants to slow the Jackson roll. We'll keep it here. 3.44 to go in the half. Jackson has been getting off to rabbit fast starts in these games. Not so tonight, but let's hope the flip side means I, they finish strong. Why did you just have to speak that? I was already thinking oh. that, though. 3.44 to go in the half. Jackson, lucky, in my opinion, to be down only two. This has been a low-scoring defensive battle. Defense been good on both sides. Shooting has been poor on both sides. Turnovers, yeah, we had a ton of those as well. Right now, you get a feeling neither team is happy with the game they're playing. This is not Timberwolves basketball, and this is it, not the Bronx we've saw the last two games. No, they've been a little sloppy with their passes and stuff. T-Town with the ball now. Pass inside to Hoosevelt. Works near side. Jack Nelson. Nelson puts with a right in the air. Tries to walk around him, but cannot. Now the shot coming from Nelson. Up and in. That's a three. Jack Nelson, who hit the game's first three, just hit another. Now the pass from Isaac Larson. Stolen by Jack Nelson. Nelson coming the other way for Teton. Hits a wide open Ty Brown. He'll slow it down. No. Hoosevelt. And Jerem Hoosevelt with a three. And two triples in a row for Teton and boy they must have discussed something on that last timeout because they've come out on a 6-0 run A.J. Fowler with the ball now for Jackson to Keelan. Keelan around the perimeter to Harlan back to Keelan Keelan watched by Jack Nelson takes a stroll to the top of the key now works the right lane up and oh that ball did everything but fall in and a whistle there and they're going to get Witherite I believe for yeah. his first team fourth Brody Hess checks in now for Teton. And that, uh, coming out of that last break, they hit two quick threes to take this to their biggest lead of the night, 25-17. They have the ball. It's Jack Nelson being watched by A.J. Fowler. Nelson tries to put a move on him. Now kicks it out to Hess. Hess drives the lane up and in. Brody Hess looked like he was out of control for a minute there, but got it to go. Seb Brunner now, and look at the pressure, full court pressure from, that's got to be Ashton Gunther it is. He is a whirling dervish. He was applying full court pressure. And, man, he commits the foul, though, doing so. That'll be his first, team seventh, and Jackson to the line now for the rest of the half. It'll be Seb Brunner, who is a about a 70% free throw shooter. Eyes this one in the front half, can't get it to go. Rebound, Ty Brown. Teton, Brody Hess, he'll drive the lane, kicks it out to Nelson. His shot, no good, too strong. Rebound, Isaac Larson does oh. not have numbers. His pass for Brunner, and boy, who going to say he was out of bounds? I thought he saved it. I thought he did. I mean, it went into the hand of a the Timberwolf. But. Yeah, it wouldn't have mattered, <laughs> but boy, he didn't look out of bounds to me. No. All right, Jack Nelson with the ball now, the 5'10 junior. 2-11 to go in a half, and Teton's starting to exercise some control over this. Brody Hess into Hoosevelt. Jerem Hoosevelt puts Larson in the air. Now a kick out. Long range Hess. Good. And Brody Hess with a three. And right now, Teton doing nothing but triples. 
Gavin Keelan with the ball. Works it up to Isaac Larson. Larson bounce pass inside to Hannah. Kick out to Brunner. Brunner's got Keelan at the top of the key. He knows he's there. He's just waiting for the pass. And now he'll work it to Larson far side. Isaac with Nelson on him. Hands off to Gavin Keelan. Teton defense really tight. Far side cross court pass to AJ. Works it inside to Hannah. Kick out Keelan. He'll try the three. Good. Gavin Keelan. And Jackson needed that badly. That cuts the lead to 10. A minute 20 to go. It's 30-20 tee time. Jack Nelson, or Brody Hess with the ball. Ty Brown can't get out of his way. Finally, they figure it out. And Hess looking around. He'll try a drive on Hannah. Hannah stuck right to him, though. Brody's got nothing there, but he'll try anyway. No good. Oh. Rebound Ty Brown up and in. As he beat Gavin Keelan, Hannah came over to help, but boy, Ty Brown too much right now for Jackson. Under a minute to go. Hannah in the lane, spin around, trying to get around Brown and does Andrew Hannah on Ty Brown. That's a fun battle. 32-22. 35 seconds to go into regulation. Jerem Roosevelt got loose inside. His little pop shot works. And right now, Teton is starting to feel it from the floor. Seth Brunner working on Ashton Gunther. Gunther's going to pick another reach in here, I think. Yeah. And then for Gunther, that'll be his third, if so, team eighth. Yes. No, I'm uh, sorry, his second team eighth. All right, one and one. I think the foul trouble eventually is going to come in to, to hurt Teton if we can get him there in the second half. But you got to hang in there if you're Jackson. You're down 12. Important free throws coming from Seb Brunner. 25 seconds left. Brunner missed both last time, and he gets this one. Seb cuts the lead to 11, 34-23. Fowler checks out. We get our first look at Drew Griebel in the game for Jackson. Seb Brunner with the back end of his two on the bonus, and that one won't go. Rebound is Brody Hess. T-Town with the ball. Who's about working it up far wing? Working on Griebel. Spins him around. Now gets it out to Hess. Hess puts a move on Keelan. Drives the left block. No good. Isaac Larson with the board. Ten seconds. Almost had his pocket picked. And that's going to be Jack Nelson with a reach in. And the ninth fall on T-Town. And just what I said, it may be one way to about, go about winning this is get Teton in foul trouble. For Nelson, it's his second. And to the line, Isaac Larson, who is ice from here. As in ice in his veins. The lefty, though, does not make it. Rebound goes into the hands of... Max Thomas, five seconds. They got to do something quick here. Thomas with a long three, no good. Rebound Jackson, but time is out as Seb Runner heaves a prayer <laughs> that almost goes in. And well, that's the end of the half. And right now, the Bronx, who have come out red hot in the Green River game, the Star Valley game, do not look like that same team. They come out very tight, very tentative, and they're paying for it. Teton at home uh -huh. is unbeaten and playing like it right now. With one half in the books, it's Teton 34, Jackson 23. We'll be back with the halftime show and some stats right after these. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on Jackson Hole Radio. Jackson Lumber, the board store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available. With names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt. Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Grovant. Call 733-6000, 733-6000.
He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes the dynamite. And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So, crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. White team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom, goes the dynamite. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. McPeak Group, whether it's Betsy Campbell, Des Jennings, Emily Figginshaw, Geraldine Ariola, Megan Murtaugh, or Brett McPeak himself, they comprise McPeak Group at Jackson Hole Sotheby's International Realty. More than half a century of combined experience with all those brokers and agents I named. They've helped more than 250 of your friends and neighbors with their real estate needs since COVID hit. They know the market. We might have to have a couple of those McPeak agents sub into the game here. These Jackson Bronx, to me, look very tentative, very tight. They put up shots that they just don't look as free and easy as they did against Green River. But Teton has got something to do with that. They play pretty good defense, and they're really tough to beat on their home court. What do we got for stats starting with our uh, Teton Timberwolves? What do they look like over there? Uh, Jack Nelson has six. Ash Gunther has two. Jerome Husvet has seven. Caden Hastings has one. Um, Brody Hess has 12. Uh, Max Thomas, two. And Ty Brown, four. Yeah, Hess has been trouble. <coughs> Ty Brown's been real strong. And Jerem Hoosevelt, we know, is going to get his points. Uh, once again, if you joined us late, Teton playing without Tom Hoosevelt, the junior, the younger brother of Jerem. He's serving a one-game suspension <coughs> for getting into technical foul trouble last night in the win over Ryrie, 66-65 for Teton. For Jackson's side of things, who's doing the scoring? Brunner has one. Hartland has five. Larson has three. Hannah has six. Keelan has seven. All right. Well, I, if you're looking for the three ball guy, and that's become <laughs> such a big part of today's game anymore, um, it looks like it may not be Fairbairn or Fowler's night, the two guys that were going crazy with it yeah, against Keelan, the Wolves and Green River. Keelan has two threes, and both but Larson and Harlan maybe have one. Yeah, maybe it's Keelan, Larson, and Harlan who are going to be the guys to hit from range. Hannah has been available down low, and he's played really well with Ty Brown, a combination of Ty Brown, Davis Wood on him. He's played well. He just can't get the ball to fall. He's also made some poor passes. I think Hannah turns around his game and you identify who are the guys who can hit from beyond the arc and you can get back in this and then there's the foul thing. I still think Teton could get in real trouble here if they start drawing fouls because they don't have a deep bench to begin with and they're down one man I was just gonna in say, the aforementioned Thomas Hoosevelt. Yeah, so Brody has us three and uh, both Guther and uh, Nelson, Gunther and Nelson or whatever, both have two each. So that's, I mean, threes, you're starting to get into trouble. Got about four minutes away from the start of the second half. So if you're Jackson, what you, you've got to do, you survive this game on the road against a good Timberwolf team that hasn't lost here in this court. Uh, you're down 11 now. You can see things uh, the bad way is you've only scored 23 po points in the first half where, well, you go back to last Friday night. This team scored 25 in the first quarter alone against the Star Valley Braves. Here you've got 23 an entire half. Yeah. That's not good news. And even worse news is you don't score.
score very well in the second half. Traditionally, Jackson's going to have to shake that and get that monkey off their back. We talked in pregame about how Coach uh, Hatfield agreed that's been a problem. Second half slumping and it says they've been working on a few things to fix it. Now those things to fix it are if you have a lead and it's it's slowing the pace and, and doing things to, to slow the game down and not get frantic. Right now I think that's out the window. You have to suddenly rediscover some kind of new thing and outscore a team in the second half. Something Jackson hasn't been able to do in a long time. I'm talking going back a year or two. This team has historically not played well in the second 16 minutes, but boy, they better tonight. Both teams back out on the floor and taking some warm-up shots as the Bronx attempt to win a race 11-point deficit. That's not impossible. Plenty of basketball to go. Teton hasn't shot it particularly well. They've been streaky. All of a sudden, they'll hit some threes, but they haven't exactly been lights out, and the Jackson Bronx have been dreadful from the field. We don't have numbers on them, but percentage-wise, boy, they're just not getting shots to go. So you got to find something, somebody in white who wants the ball and can do something with the ball. And, it's going to be a tough task. Jackson riding a three-game winning streak here. Would love to keep that rolling. They got Pinedale tomorrow. And that Pinedale game, you know the Wranglers are hunting for them. That was uh, Jackson barely escaped that Pinedale yeah, game with a three-point win. That should be another fun one at home. So I know the, the Bronx would love to have this one badly just to get, get a little revenge on T-Town who beat them at home on January 5th. The back end of that home and home here in T-Town. But the T-Wolves have been very, very good. They love this building, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, hitting some shots. We'll take one more break and we'll be back with the start of the second half. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on Jackson Hole Radio. Experience Jackson Hole like a local while staying at the Antler Inn, Elk Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, or 49er Inn and in Suites. With the best entertainment, dining, shopping, bars, and brews all in walking distance, you'll never want to leave. Call 1-800-4-TETONS or find them on the web at townsquareins.com. Here's your voice of the Jackson Bronx, Jake Nichols on KZ95. Once again, if you joined us late, apologies, but we are not broadcasting on KZ95, 95.3 FM or KZ95.live having trouble with our audio signal, technical difficulties, but we are on the YouTubes. Of course, you won't know that unless you're already on with us on YouTube, on our Jackson Hole Radio YouTube channel. Bringing you all the action. 34-23, an 11-point lead for Titana. They have the basketball to start the third. Nelson inbounds on the backcourt to Hoosevelt. Jerem Hoosevelt working on Isaac Larson. Jerem, ball over his head. Now left-hand pass inside to Hess, who backs his man into the lane, puts it up, and can't get it to go. Brody Hess, nice job backing his way into the rack, but couldn't get the shot to go. A.J. inside to Hannah. Hannah will try a right-hand shot in the lane, and that's good. And Hannah had two guys on him, but converts, and Jackson starts the third quarter in a encouraging fashion. Uh oh, wide open for Wood, but that shot fails to go down. And now uh, Keelan is hit in the head, but Whoa. wait a minute, is that shot going to count? It, it will. It is, and they're going to call a follow on our guy. It, oh. Kevin Keelan is holding his head. He got, he got bonked whacked. in the head. Meanwhile, I didn't see who that was on T Town to put the shot up and in. Um, yeah, uh huh, Wood. Uh, it was Wood, Davis Wood, and he'll go to the He's line. The one that caused a foul. 6 8 senior. And he converts three. the three-point play there to make it 37-25. So, boy, what a turn of events. We're looking for Keelan to draw a foul. It doesn't happen. It's three points Teton instead. Keelan with the ball now. He looks okay. 
Works it to Seb Runner here in the near angle. Sepp dribbling on Hoosevelt. Pulls up his dribble. Kicks out to Keelan. Had an open look three for a moment. And the window closed. Brunner on the baseline is trapped. Out to A.J. He'll try a three top of the key. No good. Ooh. Hannah gets out. Rebounded by Ty Brown, who had better position on him, blocking him out. And here comes T-Town behind the back. Dribble by Hess. He coughed it up. Picked his oh. pocket was Keelan. Hannah in the lane was wide open for that home run pass. And Andrew Hanna puts it up and in. Ten-point game now. Jackson closing the gap. Nelson with the ball, the 5'10 junior, working on A.J. Fowler. Jack Nelson thought about it pulling up for that 15-footer, didn't take it. This is Hess on the far side behind the back dribble. Works a one-arm pass to Hoosevelt. He gets in oh. all kinds of trouble, and he walked, I believe. No, no they're going to say he held charged. the ball. Charge. Charge. He does pick up the charge. That's his first. Jerem Hoosevelt and the team first. Jackson Ball trying to cut into a 10-point lead. Just over six to go underway here in the second half. Gavin Keelan. Works it near side of the angle to Larson. He pulls up, but he's got wood in his face. Now Gavin Keelan with a long three, two short. Hess tracks down the rebound for T-Tat. Here come the Timberwolves. Hoosevelt. Hoosevelt with a screen from Wood. Gets it far side to Hess. Brody Hess, ball over his head. Works it now to Ty Brown. Ty Brown, Keelan on him. Those two have been matched up all game. Davis Wood, far side, doesn't want the three. Gives it to... Webb inside pass now to Hoosevelt. That's oh. tipped away. Seb Brunner with a steal. Seb coast to coast. Never got the shot off. He had his pocket picked by Webb. Now a foul as Isaac Larson pulled down the loose change. He's bumped by Ty Brown, I believe. We'll see who gets rung up here. 5.34 to go. Yep, Tyson Brown. Tyson Brown, that's just his first. Team second. Jackson Ball. Brunner will inbounds underneath his own basket. Larson to Hannah to A.J. A.J. to Keelan. Just perimeter stuff. Brunner tries a three. That's good. Seth Brunner. And Jackson pulls to within seven on the Brunner baseline three. Hess drives the lane. Kick out Ty Brown. He had a look for a moment. Now he's picked up by Keelan. Can't get into the baseline. Keelan turned him away. Nelson with the ball now. Working on AJ. Gets him spun around. Nelson in the lane. Left hand lay in. Good. Jack Nelson with a move to get by AJ. And puts it up and in with five to go in the third. Keelan thought about a long three. Stutter step. Now I'll hand it off to Isaac Larson. Back to Keelan. Again, steps around Hoosevelt. His shot blocked oh. by Wood. Come on the other way is Hoosevelt. His shot up and in. Jerem Hoosevelt. And whistles and a timeout. And Hastings is pretty happy with what he's seeing. Caden Hastings, the junior, jumping around. Teton called it as they increase their lead back to 11, 41-30. And T-Town, boy, they can get points in a hurry. Yeah. And they did there. Jackson had pulled to within seven. The Bronx trailed by 11 at the half. Closed the gap to seven, and now the lead right back to 11, just like that. And to me, the Bronx look reluctant to get shots off. They're really not getting a lot of open lo looks. Teton's playing very good defense. Mm -hmm. I think sooner or later as the Bronx, you're going to have to realize, look, I'm not going to be wide open. I'm just going to, if I'm a little open, I better take this shot. Carson Harlow with the ball, flashes a two. That's the play and works it far side to Brunner, right in front of his own bench. Back to Harlan. He's directing traffic. Harlan at the top of the key to Brunner. Far side angle. Now inside of Keelan. Gives to Hannah. What a beautiful pass. Tic-tac-toe. Hannah finishes in the lane strong and it's 41-32. T-Town with the ball. With a piece of cotton in his nose is Gunther, who gets it out to Ty Brown. Ty Brown, little shake and bake on Keelan. We can't get rid of him. Hastings with it now. Leaves it for Thomas. Max Thomas will try a three. And that's short. It brushed the net. I thought it went in, but it did not. Isaac Larson or Carson Harlow with it now to Keelan. Gavin Keelan driving on Brody Hess. Puts a shot up. No good. Good defense by Hess to deny Keelan a good look. And the rebound, Teton. Gunther moves it ahead to Hastings. Hastings, little shuffle step on AJ. Tries to get around him. Spin move in the lane. His shot. Good! And the foul. It's going to be Hannah. 
who picks up the hurt and a pretty nice move in there. Even when Teton's outsized, and that was the case there, Hastings is 6-2 going against the 6-7 Hannah, but just so quick. Put a nice move on. It's not Hannah. They're going to charge A.J. Fowler, it looks like, with a foul. That shot no good, and Hannah with a rebound. 43-32, the 11-point lead again. Seb Brunner working on Gunther. Seb, nice Yes. Shot there, gets it to go, and Gunther's going to pick up the foul. That will be his third, and Seb with a chance to make it an N3 and close it again to six if he can. Sorry, close the lead to eight if he can get this. And they're going to have to go get, well, Ty Brown comes out, replaced by Davis Wood. And Gunther stays in there with his three fouls. Seb does convert to make it a three-point play, and it's 43-35, T-Town with the ball. Brody Hess, spin move in the lane, kick out. Got a wide open Hastings, he'll try a three. Rattles in and out, rebound. Hannah lost the handle, but Keelan helps him out. Gavin gets it over to Seb Brunner. Jackson with the ball, 3.15 to go in the third. Jackson trail, they've trailed the whole way. Gavin Keelan, power move down the right lane, up and in, and Keelan, is, Leads all Jackson scores, I believe. We'll double check that. <laughs> Hastings behind the back move on Fairbairn. Max Thomas in the lane. Fairbairn picks him up. Jackson looked like they're in a 2-3 zone here. Hastings with a move on Keelan. Lost the handle. Comes back and picks it up. Hastings really quick. Gets it out to a three. That shot no good from... Roosevelt, I believe. Down, Jackson Brawl. Seb Brunner will slow it down. Now, kick out pass. Finds a wide open Keelan. Puts his man in the air. 15 oh. footer. No good. Hannah with a rebound. Porter uh, uh, Davis Wood blocks that. And are they going to call Wood on the foul? As Wood looked like he got all ball. Boy, you don't see Andrew Hannah rejected very often like that. Wood at 6'7. Same height. Or 6'8", rather. Hannah's 6'7", six, 6'8", six, in that neighborhood. Yeah, he looks a little taller than Hannah, but not much. Seb Brunner, baseline three, too strong. Rebound, Brunner's going to get it back, saves it to Hannah. Hannah oh. lost it to Wood as he ripped it out of his hands. Jump ball. And they may jump it, they may foul. They're going to call a jump ball, and that'll flip the arrow right now. It's Teton's ball. Hoosevelt will inbounds. 2.20 to go in the third. It's a six-point lead for the Timberwolves. Jackson needs a stop here. Hastings drives the lane. Fairbairn with good defense there, but they are going to whistle him. I don't mind it. You got it. You've got guys who can foul. That's just okay. Fairbairn's second. Puts Hastings at the line. That would have been a freebie lay-in had not Mack committed the foul. Hastings to the line makes that one. 44-37. Hastings eyes the back half and gets it. So he makes both, and the Fairbairn foul doesn't look as good now. Jackson with the ball. Carson Harlan over the timeline to Gavin Keelan. He's got Hannah, gives him the ball. Hannah, bounce pass inside to Larson, who turned around jumper no good, but I think before he ever got it off, a foul. And the whistle's starting to... Kaden starting Hastings. to sing right now. It's Hastings, his second. Seb Brunner to inbounds. Bounce pass to Harlan, to Hannah. Cross court to Keelan, to Fairbairn. Fairbairn bounce pass into Hannah. Kicks it oh. right back out to Keelan. Over to Harlan. He'll try the three, and that's off the back of the iron. No good. Hastings sky high for the board. Up ahead to Hoosevelt. Jerem Hoosevelt drives baseline. Reverse lay-in is good. And Jerem Hoosevelt... Well, the big time play there puts Teton up by 10 again. Seb Brunner in the lane, spin move, bounce pass to Hannah's a beauty, and he goes reverse lay in on Davis Wood, and that was pretty. Timeout, Jackson. The Brunner pass was beautiful, and the finish by Hannah was gorgeous. Jackson cuts it to 47 39, and their timeout on the floor. So, with the timeout, we'll take a break. Be right back. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on Jackson Hall Radio. Jackson Lumber, the board store. Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. 
Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available, with names like Vestool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senco, Fine, and DeWalt. Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Gromont. Call 733-6000, 733-6000. Your home for Jackson Hole High School sports is KZ95. Let's get back to the game. Back to the action. T-Wolves lead it. They've been in the lead the whole way, and they're looking like a team that's undefeated on their home court. 6-0 here, and they want to keep that rolling, and now the clock is buzzing away for no apparent reason. 126 to go on the third. T-Town ball. Jackson applying a little bit of pressure here. Seb Brunner comes out to meet Hoosevelt at half court, trying to stick with him. Jerem Hoosevelt gives it to Hastings. Hastings hands off. That's Max Thomas. He'll drive the right side on Keelan. Nothing there. So he gets back out to Hoosevelt. Top of the key. Reset. Hoosevelt puts a shoulder into Brunner. Drives and can't get the shot to go. And I think they're going to get him for the charge here. He bumped into Brunner and bumped into Andrew. Yeah. Huh? He wrapped his arm around Brunner. And okay. You and then he hugged that. Brunner. <laughs> yeah, so can't do that. He ran over two guys and hugged one. That's worth a foul. That's his third. I believe. I think they, yeah. Scoreboard operator, I don't know if it's keeping up with the fouls. Jackson ball just under a minute. Hannah gets a wood in the air and then puts the shot up and in. Nice job by Andrew Hannah to finish there. It's 47-41. Hastings pulls up his dribble, gets it to Wood. Davis Wood back to Hastings, way up here high at top of the key with a right, picked off, but gets back into the play. Now Hoosevelt has the ball poked away, stolen. Ooh. Jackson with the ball now. It's Carson Harlan takes his time. For a moment, Ashton Gunther wanted to pick his pocket, but Harlan said no way. Carson drives into Hannah, up and in. Andrew Ooh. Hannah makes the shot, now tumbles to the ground as he got tied up with Wood for a second. Jackson has come within four as the third quarter ticks down. Hoosevelt with a long three. That rattles in and out. Hannah with the board. They got to go quickly here. Set runner. Two seconds. Harlan will try a shot at the buzzer. Uh. No good. And the third quarter will end with Jackson showing a little life here. Don't go anywhere. Suddenly an 11-point lead is cut to four. It's 47-43 Teton. We'll be back with the exciting finish. We guarantee you eight minutes, maybe more. You're enjoying Brock's basketball on Jackson Hole Radio. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. Live play-by-play -play coverage of Jackson Bronx Sports continues with Jake Nichols on KZ95. Uh, this is going to be an exciting finish, I think. Jackson showing a little pushback here. They have the ball and trail by four, 47-43 as we begin the fourth quarter. Seb Brunner with the ball in the backcourt. Teton fans on their feet, kind of blocking some of our view here. Not much we can do about that. Brunner's pass intended for Carson Harlan, but Hastings, or sorry, Hess got a hand on it, out of bounds. Jackson ball. Possession arrow favors the Bronx. If we're looking ahead to that, Seb Brunner will inbounds. Floats one to Carson Harlan over the top of Hess. Harlan to Hannah. Around to Gavin Keelan. Puts Hoosevelt in the air momentarily. Harlan back to, oh, back to Keelan. Almost stolen by Jerem Hoosevelt. Now Brunner drives the lane. Picks up a double team. Looking for the kick out. Cross court to Harlan. Puts a man in the air. Let's go with a oh. three. No good. And a good rebound there by Tyson Brown. Ripped it away from Hannah and Witherright. And a big miss. Boy, I thought Har Harlan had it. It was a good look. He was open. 
47-43, Teton with the ball. Hoosevelt bounce pass inside to Hess. Hess backs his man to the lane, now hands it out to Ty Brown. Tyson, spin move in the lane down the left side, kicks out to Nelson. You thought he walked? Uh, Nelson, yeah, I did. spin move, gives it to <laughs> Ty Brown. He lost the handle, steal by Seth Brunner. He's got Harland up ahead. Harland oh. works at cross court. He wanted Hannah, it goes to Witherite. Oh. Witherite, three, oh. no good. And now a reach in foul on Harland as Hoosevelt came down with the board and Carson Harlan tried to rip it away from him, but a little too aggressive. Yeah, I think he looked more like he was punching him across yeah, the he, face. Yeah, <laughs> he wanted that ball, let's just say that. Harlan, that's his first team, fourth. 47-43, 6.52 to go. And Hoosevelt will inbounds here to Hess, who gives it right back to him. Jerem Hoosevelt with Sepp Brunner on him. Bounce pass to Hess. Brody Hess, the three-ball threat, works on Witherite. Drives the lane, left hand, uh, up and in. And Witherite's going to draw the foul. Three-point play. Will, Willis said, I didn't think I did anything. By the way, this is Willis Witherite's old team. He has played for Teton. Uh, transferred over to Jackson, so he knows most of these kids. And the three-point play is made with that conversion. It's now a 50 to 43 game. Teton in the lead. Isaac Larson bounce pass into Hannah. Whoa. That almost Whoa. went awry, but not. Jackson saves it. Seb Brunner puts a move on. Nelson drives the lane. He got out of control there, and he's saved by what I believe will be a foul. It's on Jack Nelson, and he's starting to get him piling up. That's his third I team, sixth. There's at least three. With a right, we'll check out for Drew Griebel, who checks back into the game. Saw action earlier. Seb Brunner, far side. He has not come off the floor. Isaac Larson to Griebel. Back to Larson. Stolen away. Jerem Hoosevelt finds a wide open Nelson home run pass. And Hannah got back to deny Nelson. He will pick up the foul, but no way was he going to let Jack Nelson put that in. The 5'10 junior got dumped. And Hannah standing over him helped him up, but he was the guilty party. That's Hannah's second. Get Nelson to the line. The junior chance to add to a seven-point lead, and he does not. It's off the back of the iron. First one, no good. Mac Fairbairn and Carson Harlan come in for Larson and Griebel. 6.13 to go. A seven-point Jackson uh, trails. Jackson has never led in this one. Teton got out to a fast start, and the Bronx have just not been able to get back in it. Nelson hits that one. And the lead back to eight. 51-43, Brunner to Carson Harlan. Hoosevelt on him, back to Seb Brunner, into Keelan. Wide open is Harlan, he'll try a three. Good! Carson Harlan! That's his second three tonight, I believe, and Jackson has an answer. Nelson to the lane, he kind of skidded there, gets it to Thomas, his shot no good. Now they call the travel. Boy, that was a delayed travel as Nelson kind of slid halfway across the floor past to Thomas. Thomas let the shot go and then finally they blew the travel whistle on Nelson, I believe. Brunner with the ball. Jackson within five. Sepp, watched by Hoosevelt, gets it near side to Harlan. Hot off that three and in the same spot, Hannah gets it inside to Keelan. Good defense oh. on him by Brody Hess, and the shot won't go. Who's about with the rebound? Here's Hess. Hess for Teton. Hands off to Ty Brown. He tries in the lane up and over. Keelan, no good. Gavin with the rebound. Good defense by both teams. Keelan there denying Tyson Brown the easy shot. Seb Brunner's going to try a three. That's good to the whistle. And Coach Hatfield says, let's talk about it, kids. 51-49, Jackson within one possession now with 5.14 to go in regulation. Are we headed for extras? No. <laughs> We're going to win. You're flat out saying no, they'll win it in regulation. We'll see. Boy, this is something we have not seen Jackson do, and that's play a second half, and I like it. They started slow, going to finish strong. The Bronx have been getting off to fast starts. That included their last two wins, Green River and, T and Star Valley. Boy, you couldn't start faster than Jackson did. Tonight, it was all Teton to start. The Bronx looked like it was all they could do to kind of hang in there. 
And hang in there they did. A real character game now for the Bronx. They're within two. They need to stop here as Nelson will inbounds. Jackson dialing up some full court pressure. As Carson, uh, Isaac Larson, no, it's Carson Harlow will come out to play the inbounds pass here from Nelson, who gets it to Hoosevelt. Now Jackson backed off. Jackson, a man-to-man -man defense, trying to get a turnover or a stop. Jerem Hoosevelt gets a screen from Wood, heads to the lane, and oh. Keelan denies him. And Gavin's going to pick up a foul, but Hoosevelt might have had an easy left-handed lay-in, if not for Keelan, coming over to help out and make contact. For Gavin, well, they're going to get Griebel on it. We'll take that. Drew Griebel draws the infraction. And Hoosevelt makes that one. It's back to a three-point game. 52-49. Griebel in there for his defense will come out now for Mac Fairbairn. Is Hatfield really working the bench with substitution? Second one coming from Jerem Hoosevelt. He got them both, so that foul was costly. Jackson ball down by four. Seb Brunner with Gunther. Ashton oh Gunther on him to Keelan. Now to Harlan. Harlan floats a pass into Hannah. Hannah watched by Wood. Seb Brunner's going to try another three. Can't Long. get two in a row. Rebound goes to Hoosevelt. Jerem going to slow it down for the T-Wolves with 4.40 to go. They have a four-point lead. Not in a hurry, but Hess will try a three. That's way short. Rebound almost saved. Hannah has it. No numbers, though. He's one on three. He's trying it. Anyway, oh. and what a nice stop by Brody Hess, but they're going to whistle him. I thought Hess got all ball, and so did Brody, but that's his fourth. And that's what you got to do if you're Jackson yeah. and you're Hannah. Drive the lane, force them to commit fouls, and Hess had to there and picks up his fourth. He's in trouble. And while Hannah may not be the best free throw shooter, and he does miss this, more importantly, by going to the rack, you cause somebody to have to commit a foul, and Hess is one more from being out of here. Hannah's uh. second. He can't get either of them. And it's Jack Nelson with the ball, and he throws Ooh. it away. The steal. Carson Harlan goes high in the air to take that away. Carson cross court to Brunner to Gavin Keelan. Fairbairn will try oh, a three. Wow. That's tipped oh. uh. by Wood, and that's coming to Teton's ball. Davis Wood come out and got a piece of that Fairbairn baseline three. Wood comes way out to challenge on the perimeter, and he blocks a lot of shots doing so. I mean, I hate that Hannah has three, but that was a good. Andrew Hannah, yeah, commits good. his third foul, team eighth. Both teams on the bonus now as Hess will go to the line. Brody Hess, the 6'3 senior, pretty good three ball shooter. See how he does here from the line. The first one's good, he's a lefty. I didn't realize that makes it a 54-49 game. And try as they might, Jackson keeps scratching their way close, only to watch it slip away. That one missed. Hannah with the board. Gavin Keelan with the ball. Just over four to go in regulation. Seth Brunner with it now. On the near angle, Brunner puts a move on Nelson. Now kicks out top of the key to Harlan. Harlan watched by Gunther. Back to Seth Brunner. He's got Max Thomas on him. Brunner. Drives the lane. Thomas shuts him off. Pass to Hannah. Hannah double teams so kicks it out to Keelan. Wide open Fairbairn. His three over Wood again. Oh. Rattles in and out. Rebound goes right to the hands of Mac Thomas. Fairbairn had an open look. Porter Wood came out, or Davis Wood came out to challenge him, but he just missed. Oh. Runner is going to commit a foul here. He was going for the steal, and he makes contact with Jerem Hoosevelt. That'll send Hoosevelt to the line, who is a very good free throw shooter. That's for Seb, just his first. I, I almost really think Jerem sub went to block it and Jerem grabbed the ball and sub's hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that was a... Jerem does make that one, and now it's 55-49, a six-point game. The Bronx just get close, only to watch it slip away. 3.41 to go. Roosevelt converts both. And these free throws down the stretch. Boy, T-10 has been money from the charity mm -hmm. strike so far. Brunner with it now. Inside pass to Keelan. Wide open. Why not? And he does. He blows right past David Wood. Up and in Gavin Keelan. Pulls Jackson within five. Who's the belt the other way? That's up and in. Seth Brunner on him, but... Looked like Seb might have oh. been a little reluctant to play tight defense there. Brunner with the ball. 
Teams going back and forth here with just over three to go in the fourth. Andrew Hanna kicks it back outside to Keelan. Far side, Fairbairn inside to oh. Hanna. And he missed the shot out of bounds off Hanna's hand. And boy, Andrew Hanna had the look he wanted. And that's what happens when Davis Wood, 6'8", comes out to challenge Mac Fairbairn. That leaves the inside open. Yeah. Fairbairn recognized that, got the ball inside to Hanna, but he, fair, he failed mm. to finish. Teton Ball, Hoosevelt, who has been deadly right now. He's been a thorn in Jackson's side. Gives it to Wood, who gives it to Hess. Hess bounce pass inside. Oh. Got Max Thomas. His shot no good, and Keelan is going to draw the foul here, I believe. Sure? Said Thomas to the line. No, it's going to be Fairbairn. Yeah. Keelan kind of sagged his shoulders like he thought it was on him, but it's going to be Fairbairn, his third, team 10th. And the double bonus now for T-Town. First one by Thomas is no good, but he'll get the bonus end. Substitutions, it's Hastings back of the game. He replaces Hoosevelt, and boy, I don't mind that. Jerem Hoosevelt has been unreal right now in this second half. Second one from Thomas is good, and Teton builds the lead to eight. 59-51, Seth Brunner runs right down the lane, feeds Hannah, his shot good. And it's back to a six-point game and a timeout. Who called that one? That's Bronx. Jackson. Yeah, Coach Hadfield wants to discuss a little more strategy. I hope one of the things he identifies is if you can't get that open three look and if you do draw Davis Wood, all of six, eight of them, outside on the perimeter, Wood is not afraid to come out and challenge at the arc. And he blocked one of Fairbairn's threes. He came out to block mm -hmm. again on that last play. And Mac recognized it and said, hey, if you're here, that means nobody is inside on my big man. And he found Hannah all alone in the paint. Andrew just failed to deliver. This is, I mean, Hannah's having a good game, but he's not having an Andrew Hannah game. He's no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Missing some not of these shots. Bad, but he, yeah. He's been fantastic. Teton ball. They bring it up court. It's watch out from behind. Seth Brunner pokes it away. What hustle there. Seth Brunner poked it away from Brody Hess. Beautiful steal. Jackson ball. Brunner with it now to Gavin Keelan. A chance to cut the lead to four if they can make one. Three if they can hit a three. Gavin Keelan with it now. Wants Hannah inside. Floats one to him. Andrew Hannah with it. Trying to put a move on Ty Brown. Up and over oh. him. No good. Yes, Rebound though goes to Carson Harlan. Harlan kick out to Seb. He puts a man in the air. Now a three from Larson. That's short. Gavin Keelan oh. with a rebound, but it's ripped away by Ty. Brody Hess and going the other way. Max Thomas. Oh, boy. So close. And back to a 61-53 game. Another timeout. That could have gone this could have been so close. Hannah failed to convert inside. Jackson with another chance on the offensive boards. Failed to make that and missed opportunities now in the second half. Hasn't been for a lack of effort. Jackson has not been a very good second half team this season, but they're giving it their all tonight. Just the finish is not there. Man, if they played like they're playing the second half like they did against Star Valley and Green River, woo, we would have won by like 20 something. Well, that's that loose feeling you play with. That, that's long gone. The Bronx have not played loose like they did against the Star Valley game in the first half and like they did against most of the Green River game. They don't look like that team that's real free and easy with the ball. They look pretty tight all game long. Buck 50 to go in regulation. Jackson has to erase an eight-point lead. They've gotten as close as within two, only to watch Teton keep pushing back. And right now the T-Wolves with 61 points are playing at about their game average. They average 61 exactly this season. So let's hope the T-Wolves stop right there. Seb Brunner drives the lane. Little pop shot. Good. An eight-footer. Seb Brunner gets a big bucket for Jackson. And the Bronx got to think about fouling here. And that's why Jerome Hoosevelt's in the game. He's not a guy you want to send to the line. Hoosevelt oh, drives. He stepped out. Almost went out of bounds, but he did save it with a pass to 
Brody Hess. Hess has it now. Double team. Drives baseline. Kick out to Wood. Stolen away. Seth Brunner floats oh. one to Harlan. Harlan's wide open. Now he hands off to Hannah. His uh. shot no good. And he is fouled. That's the good news. The bad news is it's Hannah at the line. But we'll see. Minute 16. And it's a six-point game. Boy, Harlan had the home run pass. He just took him too long to corral it. By the time he did, the defense got back there. He handed the ball off to Hannah, who failed to make the layup and now misses the first of his free throws. The foul, by the way, on Davis Wood, just his first. Hannah with the second now with a bonus, and that won't go, and Andrews oh. 0 for the night from the line. Yeah. With just over a minute, Jackson has to foul. Seb Brunner comes out on Hoosevelt. He whacks him, and Jerome is as good as you can get from the line, but what else can you do? There's no way Teton's even going to throw one up here. This is a team that usually plays with a shot clock here in Idaho, but not when they're playing a Wyoming team. So Hoosevelt's first is good. Jerem Hoosevelt makes it 62-55 T-Town. 107 to go in the fourth. Hoosevelt, deep knee bend, takes a shot, and he's good with both of them. And Teton has not missed a free throw in this second half, I don't think. I don't remember one. Seb Brunner with the ball. Jackson has to hurry with these possessions. They got to put shots up inside to Hannah. Floats one across to Keelan, up over his hands. Pass too high, and that's another bad pass off of Hannah. He is not having his best game, and I only say that because you, you expect more from a guy who's that good. Jerem Hoosevelt with Brunner on him. Brunner trying not to foul and play tight oh. defense. Seb almost steals it. Now oh. he will get the push off. And Seb played it about as tight as you can play it. Eventually commits the foul. And Jerem Hoosevelt to the line. Well, that. it was close. Not the one they whistled. You could have called anything before that. For Seb, that's his third. And guess what? Jerem Hoosevelt makes that one. 64-55, back to a nine-point lead. They can extend it to 10 here with Hoosevelt from the line, and he gets a shooter's roll and makes it a 10-point game. Jackson with the ball now, 45 seconds and counting. Set Brunner with it on the far wing. Brunner's going to put up a three. got to do it quick, and he does. Bam! Set Brunner makes it 65-58. Quick timeout, Jackson, and Hatfield's going to get his money's worth with the timeouts. He'll probably use them all down the stretch here. 38.7 seconds. Jackson's... Strategy here has to be to foul. That's where we are now. But who do you foul when you know that Coach Hoosevelt over on the Teton side is going to say, I want the ball in the hands of number three, and that's it. Jerem Hoosevelt, the 6'1 senior, has been perfect from the line here in the second half. And those points add up. Mm -hmm. So expect an inbounds pass coming to get the ball as fast as they can to Hoosevelt. Jackson, meanwhile, will love to follow anyone else. Full court pressure here, of course, for the Bronx. Inbounds pass coming from Nelson. He'll be looking for Hoosevelt. Harlan is on him, trying to deny this pass. We'll see if Nelson can find him. Hannah is going to guard the inbounds pass. So Andrew Hannah at 6'7". It's going to be tough to float one over the top of him. 38 seconds to go. Jackson Trail, 65-58, looking for a man. It's going to be tight. And that's the guy you want there. And there's finally the foul. Hannah has to do it. It's Brody Hess. Who they get a piece of? Hess is pretty good from the line as well, the lefty. So pick your poison. Oh, they gave it to Seb. Okay, Seb picks up his fourth. And it'll be Brown to the line. Sorry, I thought that was Brody Hess who picked up the foul. So I didn't get the guy who committed it or who took it. That's not what I thought happened. Tyson Brown, the junior, and he misses that one. So Jackson yeah. gets what they want. He'll get a bonus here, though. Teton up by seven. 37 seconds. Bronx need a miss and a rebound here, and then they got to push it. Brown makes it, and it's a 66-58 game. No. Oh, I thought no shot. Nope, no shot. No shot lane violation, yep. so Who's take that off the board. All right. Who's about Jackson with over. the ball. Seb Brunner, they got to hurry. Brunner working on Nelson, gets a screen from Hannah, now works it to... 
Carson Harlan drives the lane. Kick out Keelan. He'll try a three. That's too short off the iron. Rebound Harlan out to Brunner. His three. That won't go either. Isaac Larson tracks down the rebound. Larson drives the lane to Brunner. Brunner hands off to Hannah. Up and in. Time out. And, boy, that clock ran a good two seconds after the whistle went. Yes, she did. 12.4. We'll see if they put any back. That clock seemed to run for a little bit. And the referee takes a look at the clock, and now he's walking over the scorer's table. He may add to this. We'll see. It was a slow stoppage, and they will put a second 1.1 back on. 13.5 seconds. It's a five-point game. Jackson trails 65-60, but it's tee time ball. you got to foul again immediately. you got to hope that foul isn't committed on Tom Hoosevelt, mm. or Jer uh, Jerem, rather. Tom not in the game. And boy, you're really left to desperation here if you're Jackson. I like the effort in the second half. Just too many missed opportunities. Nelson again will inbounds. Hannah again will be on him trying to deny an inbounds pass. Who's of help being watched by Carson Harlan? Harlan not even looking at the ball. He's just watching number three, staring at his chest. And we're about ready to see as Hoosevelt is talking to Ty Brown. I think they got some kind of pick play worked out. We'll see. Here comes Nelson with the inbounds. Looking, looking, and he does work it into Ty Brown. Brown is immediately mugged by Isaac Larson, and they'll oh. send Tyson Brown to the line. 12.5, so that took one second. To the line is Brown, a five-point game. Jackson can only hope he misses both here. We're in the double bonus, so he gets two shots at it. A two-possession game, but a, a miss there helps, and he bangs this one off the back of the iron. 12 and a half seconds. You get a miss here, and Jackson needs a rebound, and then they really got to get down court. Second one is good, and it's a six-point game. Inbounds to Seb Brunner. He tries racing down. Nelson following right behind him. Brud's, Brunner tries a desperation three. No good. Hess with the rebound. Gets the pass to Hoosevelt, and a foul here on Jackson will send another player to the line. Hoosevelt just chucks one yeah, down the other end. And that should not be there's, Yeah, if there's such a thing as delay a game, uh, 3.8 seconds to go to the line is... Brody Hess, the lefty, a pretty good free throw shooter, and he's got that one. And Hess icing it here for Teton. Seven point game, a three possession game now, and all but one for the T Wolves. He makes both inbounds. Hannah to Keelan with one second. He's got to put up a long one. It's no good. Off the back of the iron, and Teton remains unbeaten at home. Jackson has a three-game winning streak snapped, and the Timberwolves take both a sweep of the home-and-home -home series with the Jackson Bronx. We'll be back to wrap things up. Final score, Teton 68, Jackson 60. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on Jackson Hole Radio. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh... He, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes the dynamite. And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. The white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom, goes the dynamite. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh. Shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. Your home for Jackson Hole High School Sports is KZ95. Let's get back to the game. Back to wrap things up here in Teton High School in Driggs, Idaho, where the Timberwolves have 
secure the victory at home. That's their seventh win in as many tries at home with the victory. Teton moves to 15 and two overall. They're now on a two game winning streak. And with the loss, Jackson uh, will fall to eight and three. This is a non-conference game, so that's the good news for the Jackson Bronx. This game will not count for any conference standing. Still a disappointment for Jackson that coming off those two wins last weekend that propelled the Bronx into the fourth uh, ranking slot there by the coaches and media poll, uh, only to have all that momentum stopped here in Driggs, Idaho is tough to take. But again, a non-conference game. And again, this is no slouch of an opponent if you're the Bronx. You saw a lot of good things. Jackson had pushed back in the second half. And this T-Wolves team, I'll tell you, they play a tough schedule over here in Idaho. And they are a good basketball team. They got it done tonight at home, even without one of their stars, Tom Hoosevelt, who did not play the junior serving a one-game suspension. It didn't matter in the end. A six-point victory for the Timberwolves. Who led the uh, T-Wolves in scoring? Boy, I can think of a number of guys who Whoa. had a game, but Jerem Hoosevelt from the line really iced it. You're not going to get who. I got to go in order. Sorry here. Okay. Um, Nelson, uh, six, nine for Nelson, two for Gunther, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twenty for Hoosevelt. Twenty uh, for Jerem Hoosevelt. Yep. Yeah. Jerem. Boy, he must have done ten of those from the free throw line. Five for Hastings. Hess has got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eighteen for Hess. Um, what do we have here? Thomas, two, four, five, Brown, four, five. Five and for Thomas, five for Ty Brown. And three for Wood. And three for Davis Wood. You got an MVP from the Teton side. I like Brody Hess, honestly. Thought he had a great game defensively but and offensively. Jerome or Brody? And uh, Jerem Hoosevelt, yeah. Jerem. Jeremy Brody. Thank goodness, 20 I mean, points. points. I mean, only anytime two you put off. in 20, yeah. For Jackson, what do they look like? Let's go with. Fifteen for Seb. That's his little bit over his season average. He's averaging about a dozen a game. Um. Harlan, eight. Wait, so, yeah, eight. Carson Harlan averaging three a game, so eight. He had a good game, really good game. Ooh, hit Larson, some, three. He had some important threes when they needed them. Isaac Larson with three, okay. Twenty-two for Hannah. All right. That's the quietest 22 out of Andrew Hanna. Well, for Keelan. Hanna's averaging 17 a night, so that 22 is five points better. And it still didn't seem to me like Hanna had his best yeah. game. Uh, no. How many for Gavin? Gavin Keelan had 12. 12. That's it. That's the third straight game from Gavin, and he's been really good. He's averaging about 10 a game. And it's really come on is Star Valley, Green River, and now this one. Keelan had a very good game. Okay. That's it. I mean, the sad part is Fairburn and Fowler, zero. Just couldn't get it on track. And they both had from distance. five yep. threes just a few days ago. Oh, yeah. That's 30 points in Green River out of two guys who were held off the board tonight. So, that yeah. you know, that's a huge difference. MVP from uh, the Bronx side. I don't want to be hard on Andrew, but I thought he left some points on the table. I thought his passing... Uh, I, I can remember at least three that didn't find the guy they were intended for. Mm. I thought Seb tried to do everything and kind of did. He had a good bounce back game from Green River where he was held to three points thanks to Caleb Blake being all over him. I could go with Seb. I could go with Seb. I'll, I'll give a Seb. 
All right, Charity. Seb, <laughs> Seb needs a soak tonight, and Ooh, yeah, he's our MVP. Waters. The 5'10 junior, Seb Brunner, our MVP from the Jackson Bronx side. So that'll do it from courtside here. Pop that final score on there for you. The final, Teton 68, Jackson 60. And uh, we'll be back. Uh, don't forget there's a game tomorrow for the Jackson Bronx. Uh, as they return home to host Pinedale in the back half of that home and home, uh, the girls, uh, that'll be a, a really good girls team. It'll be a fun game. Uh, the Pinedale girls are very talented, and the boys looking for revenge, the Wranglers are, as Jackson was able to escape with a 58-55 win down there in Sublette County. So the Wranglers will be looking for revenge. The Bronx will be mad about this loss and maybe – looking to put it behind him with a win. So we will not be on the air tomorrow with that game. Uh, so get down to the court and watch that. It's a Jackson Hole High School Gymnasium. Get out and support the kids. Our next broadcast will be Saturday hosting the Evanston Red Devils. We will be on the air for that. Thanks so much for joining us tonight from Teton Valley and Driggs, Idaho and Teton High School. Tonight's action brought to you by Young Life. Jackson Hole, Young Life, all about teenagers. Jackson Lumber, Jackson's original board store. The McPeak Group, Jackson Hole's premier real estate team at Sotheby's International Realty and the town square ends of Jackson Hole. Who does that include? Um, town Ed, that includes the Antler Inn, Elk Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, and 49er Inn and Suites. You're on it. For Jackson Hole Radio, I'm Jake Nichols alongside Kimmy K. And wishing you and yours good night from Driggs, Idaho.